Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what a fire daimyo makes Naruto 5th Hokage. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by TRABAN16 link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1. A strong leader, the real Hokage. The council room. The council room felt tense as everyone was facing a hard time ahead. Orochimaru's assault on Kanoha did more damage than it should have. The death of Hiruzen Siratobi, the Sandame Hokage, being among that damage. We plan on continuing with other countries to counter the threat posed by Orochimaru. He will not get away with this injustice. Hamura mentioned, making clear his intentions on the matter at hand. The one from the financing department in the Land of Fire stood as he addressed the matter. After what's happened to the village, the Land of Fire will do anything it can into getting Kanoha rebuilt, but first we need to set up a considerable amount of budget and then take into account the strain on the other countries as well. Anzo in particular raised his head and showed his uncovered eye, gleaming in the sunlight. The other ninja of the room didn't sit well with that, especially the two remaining from the old days, Hamura and Kaharu. They knew what he would do, and that made them nervous. There are other important issues to be discussed, such as who will be the next Hokage. Hiruzen was killed by Rachimaru, and thus we need another Hokage. Danzo said in a somewhat fake sad tone, but the two elders could hear the sincerity of it underneath. The man had lost his greatest rival and oldest friend, and they were sure he had grieved before coming there as they did. All of the people in the room remained silent. The fire daimyo merely sat back and thought and crossed his arms. My lord, we can't decide on a plan for the village when we have no leader. Besides, the destruction of Kanoha was partially due to sand. Kaharu said as she spoke to the fire daimyo. The fire daimyo sighed as he pretended to fan himself. I'd normally choose Jureya, I like him, but he'd never do it, the fire daimyo said in thought as he looked at the battle records once more. It was then a name caught his eye, and he began reading the records with closer and more critical eyes. Seeing Danzo was about to speak, Shikaku intervened, clearly seeing the schemes of the old Warhawk. I nominate Kakashi Haddock. Shikaku said quickly as Danzo gave him a stone-like look that was his equivalent to a glare. The others seemed impressed with the nomination as murmurs and whispers went around the council chambers talking about the situation. He's well-known, strong and respected. Winato was even younger. The councilman then turned to Shikaku. Who was his teacher? The Yandame Hokage, Minato Namikaze. Shikaku replied in a calm voice as he laid his head on the table. Hook, line, and sinker. They all seemed impressed again. Ah, Kakashi who was taught by the Yandame, who was taught by Jiraiya, and he was taught by the Sandame, it would be a fine selection for the seat of Hokage. One of the councilmen exclaimed. The Sandame's teachings have as good as destroyed the village. Arachimaru was one Saratobi's pupil. Danzo said heatedly as they all turned to him. Everyone turned to Danzo who seemed to have opposed the idea, but before he could make headway, it was then that he was cut off. The Sandane was never wrong in his teachings. Hamura bit back at Danzo as they glared at one another. The Anbu commander looked at Danzo, still fully dressed from mask to shoes. You were responsible for this Danzo, and I would be damned if you were to become Hokage. You were the one that let Orochimaru roam free in Kanoha, you and your root were the ones that didn't stop him. You are in part to blame on Orochimaru's action. The Anbu commander said as he settled back in his chair. Unlike the previous commandeer who had been killed in the invasion, he wasn't afraid of the old Warhawk. Everyone seemed quiet at that bit of information, and Danzo shifted slightly as all eyes were on him. Shikaku seemed to grin as he held his head down, Haji had a point. That's true, your rude Anbu should have stopped them. You should have intervened in Orochimaru's actions, which concerned internal affairs of the Land of Fire. Do you have any explanation on this, Danzo? Shikaku asked with a hidden smirk as Danzo sat stone still. No, I had believed in the strength of our Anbu forces and Jonin to deal with Orochimaru, as I didn't want him to know of my roots still being around Danzo said convincingly, but all the clan heads, senior ninja, and elders knew that was a lie. The fire daimyo merely raised an eyebrow at this, but he never took his eyes from the records and reports he was reading. Well now, those are pretty strong allegations, and it seems we can't turn Danzo into Hokage, for it will cause such a public outrage if word of your involvement, or uninvolvement as it were, gets out. The daimyo said as Danzo fumed and glared heatedly at Shikaku. Danzo then sat back and started scheming. To this Shikaku smiled as he leaned back and let the progress of a new Hokage take place. Amura and Kahara looked at each other and smiled with inward sighs of relief. The daimyo then set aside the records and reports he had been reading as he was done with them. He leaned forward. Placed his elbows on the table and laced his hands together as a smirk appeared on his face. I think I may have an idea of who is to become the next Hokage. It'll be the daimyo started, and everyone's eyes grew wide at the person he had chosen. In the middle of the leaf village, Achoo. Naruto sneezed as he was walking down the road. 
He looked around and shrugged his shoulders as he made his way to the training field for more training. Someone must be talking about me, Naruto said as he began to run down the street in his excitement for training. In that very moment, the wheels of fate began turning again its gears shifting to start an event that will be remembered for all of the people of Konoha. Chapter 2. I'm the Hokage. Oh baby, I'm telling ya, you gotta love the Leaf Village. The girls here are off the charts. Jiraiya said happily as he was using his telescope to peek at women. It was then he sensed two people behind him. Still playing the buffoon, I see Hamura said as he and Kaharu had finally found Jiraiya. Jiraiya chuckled nervously as he began to put his telescope away and turned to them. Thus doing a little research so, old man Hamura and Kaharu sensei, what could you two scholarly advisors want with me? Jiraiya asked in all seriousness. Don't waste our time, you should know perfectly well what this is all about. Hamura stated. Come on, why the long faces guys? From what I heard talks with the sand village went off without a hitch. Jiraiya said with a shrug. The sand village stated publicly that Arachimaru was the cause for all of this and has offered their complete surrender to us, but that is not what this is about. Hamura said. They then told him of the things they were doing to control the situation, but then came the part Jiraiya didn't want to hear. But first we need a strong and trustworthy leader. Kaharu said as Jiraiya sighed. Look guys, I don't know why you're going through the trouble of explaining all this to me. Now if you don't mind, I've got dot Jiraiya said as he pulled his telescope back out but was cut off by Hamura. I think you'll be interested in what we're about to say, especially since it concerns you. Hamura said quickly and in a stern tone. This village needs the god Im Hokage immediately Hamura started as Kaharu finished for him. And yesterday, at an emergency meeting, with the Lord of the Land of Fire and Shinobi Council present, it was decided we chose Kaharu was saying, but Jiraiya cut her off. Oh, I don't know it's not up my alley to become Hokage, you know. Got spy networks and agents to run, so can't do it. Jiraiya said as quickly as he could. He never wanted to become Hokage, it was just not his thing, you know. Don't worry, we don't want you. Hamura said as Jiraiya fell over. Okay then who and why come to me? Jiraiya said as he tried to think of the poor sap they wanted to be Hokage. We came to you because you are close to the one the Fire Lord has chosen, and from the things we've heard, this person would like to hear this from a friendly voice, rather than an Anbu summoning them to the council chambers. Kaharu said as Jiraiya stroke a thinking pose. Okay who's the poor sap I mean, lucky and honorable bastard I mean guy. Jiraiya said as the two elders sweat dropped at him. It is Naruto Uzumaki Namikas. Hamura said as Jiraiya's eyes grew wide. His face then became stone serious at the mention of Naruto's true last name, while Hamura and Kaharu were shocked Jiraiya could look that serious. Naruto, why Naruto? Jiraiya asked more seriously than he ever had in his life. He'd kill for that boy. True, during Naruto's early life he wasn't around, but when he came back he promised himself to be damn well sure to make up for it. He was just glad Naruto had turned out far better than what he would or could have been had he been around. If Jiraiya was around with the things he heard civilians say back then. Well Konoha would have been a toad's footprint in the dust. The Fire Lord believes the boy to be the perfect choice as Hokage and we agree. Young Naruto has the same personality as the Shadai and Nidam Hokages. He also has the same upbringing of Hashirama Sensei did when he was small. Our fathers used to tell us stories of that time and we believe Naruto to be perfect for the Hokage title. The Haru said with a smile as Jiraiya watched her and Hamura closely. If they had any evil plans for Naruto, then he'd deal with them himself. Also, Naruto is almost exactly like Hiruzen was at that age. He, like Hiruzen, is also a fervent believer in the will of fire, which all Hokages were, in this respect. Naruto also has an unstoppable determination and drive which strongly impacts the lives around him, even his enemies have been affected by his empathy as even that sand genin, Tamari has said to refer to the boy's amazing charisma as a unique power that allows him to change the worldly views of others. Hamura stated with a smile on his face as Jiraiya's face showed nothing but pure shock. Jiraiya was absolutely and utterly floored. He had never really seen the two elders smile just from talking about a person's Anbu file information before, especially one younger than them. Hell, they used to frown or be stone-faced permanently when they talked to or even spoke of Minato. Damn Naruto really could change people for the better. Even though many of the people we've spoken to so far have called Naruto hyperactive, impatient, impulsive, and inattentive, we have also heard that, however, when the situation calls for it or when someone is in trouble, Naruto can be very serious, intelligent, and will instantly try to come to their aid. Those are great qualities of a Hokage. He may be young and inexperienced, but we have a plan to remedy that. Kaharu said as Jiraiya sighed and nodded, knowing he would be part of the remedy. Fine, I'll help, but on one condition Jiraiya said as they began to talk more on the subject at hand. But Naruto, a few hours later, Naruto was stripping himself bare trying to find his Raymond ticket as Tucci sighed. Come on Naruto, you can have this one on the house, but next time don't forget your ticket or money. Tucci said as Naruto gave him the biggest smile he could. 
He gave Naruto a fresh, steaming hot bowl of Maizo ramen. Thanks, old man Tucci, you're the greatest. Naruto exclaimed happily. Don't worry about it. Just be sure when you're Hokage, you make ramen the official dish of Konoha. Tucci said with a chuckle as Naruto chuckled as well. Sure thing. Everyone should know the greatness that is ramen. Naruto exclaimed as he began eating. After about five minutes he was about done when Jiraiya came in and sat next to Naruto. Hervey Sage, I didn't know you liked ramen. Naruto said as he finished. Jiraiya chuckled and ruffled Naruto's hair with a smile. I do, but not as much as you. In fact I'll buy you another bowl, to celebrate. Jiraiya said happily and with a laugh as Naruto was confused, but happy with more ramen. Jiraiya paid Tucci for Naruto's last bowl and another for both of them. Celebrate what, Kirby Sage? Naruto asked, but Jiraiya only chuckled and ruffled his hair again. That's a surprise for later, my young apprentice. Jiraiya said as Naruto shrugged and began to eat the ramen Tucci had placed in front of him. You're just like Kishina and Minato, when Raymond is around you don't care about anything else. Jiraiya thought as he watched Naruto eat and then began his own bowl. Later, I'm on you old pervert hermit, what's going on? Naruto yelled as Jiraiya had brought him to the Hokage Tower. Jiraiya merely laughed some more as he walked in front of Naruto. As a wise sage once said, all things are revealed in time. Jiraiya said as he could barely contain his excitement. Now it was two of his students who had become Hokage. Take that Tsunade, and she said he'd never be a great teacher when he was training Minato, but her mouth was shut tight as his Hokage ceremony. Ha, ha, alright Naruto, we're here, the place where your destiny is changed for the better. Jiraiya said as he gestured to the council chamber's door. The Anbu guards bowed to them as he and Naruto walked past them. Naruto was still as confused as ever, but he could tell this was going G to be something. Naruto and Jiraiya walked into the council room, only to see all the sensei, the clan heads, and all other important figures of the village, including the fire daimyo. Naruto looked around, trying to remember everyone he had pissed off and half the people he didn't even piss off from this month. He saw Gai, Asuma, and Kurunai, sensei. He knew Kakashi sensei was out on a mission today. He saw Hiashi, Choza, Tsum, Inoichi and Shikaku, clan heads. He saw Himura, Kaharu, and Danzo, Kanoha elders. He saw the Anbu commander along with Ibiki and Anko. He continued to look around and saw that no one of his age group was there, which made him quickly assume that it was something very important for all these people, each of who was important to the village, to be here. What's going on here? Naruto asked with a serious face. He knew he couldn't be anything but serious around these kinds of people. You were right, he can get serious in a heartbeat. Choza commented to Hamura as the older man nodded with a small smile on his face. Naruto Uzumaki, student of both Jiraiya of the Sanin and Kakashi Haddock, the one responsible for truly defeating the one-tailed Shukaku and foiling Orochimaru's plot, I, Lord of the Land of Fire, appoint you as the Godim Hokage. The daimyo said as Naruto's eyes grew wide with each word. Why me? Was the only thing Naruto could seem to ask as the daimyo chuckled. You have proven that you are strong and dependable. You've shown that will of fire Suratobi used to talk about. The people in this room have not one bad thing to say about you. You have the charisma and strength needed to lead. I think you're perfect for the job. The fire daimyo said as everyone around, except for Danzo clapped afterward. I still don't see why me. Why not Kakashi sensei, or Jiraiya sensei, or even Shikamaru. Naruto said as the daimyo walked up to him and ruffled his hair. He didn't understand why he was arguing, but he knew that being Hokage was something that needed the right leader, so that couldn't be him yet. Each of the people you've named was considered, but in the end you were the best choice. Also, you're young, so there are many things you can learn still. You want to learn, unlike what I've read on that Shikamaru. The daimyo said with a broad smile and much confidence. B but I'm still a genin. There's no way Naruto started but was cut off by Hiashi. The appointment of a cage needs not to be ranked, Naruto-san. Chunin, like Suratobi-sama have become Hokage, so why not a genin for that matter? It is all about discernment, Naruto-san. Hiashi said as he gazed at Naruto with a small smile. Naruto had helped him regain his nephew and make his family closer than it had ever been, so if Naruto needed anything of his clan, they'd do it without hesitation. The others of the room looked at Hiashi in shock, mainly because the man never gave anyone words of encouragement, even if his words were very discreet and hidden, but that being said, the fire daimyo smiled and looked toward Naruto, who remained silent with his head to the floor in thought. Will you accept the position, Naruto Uzumaki, or should we call you, Hokage-sama? The fire daimyo asked with a brighter smile. Naruto stood still, still contemplating the offer. He thought he couldn't be Hokage now. He knew for a fact there were plenty of ninja who were stronger than him right now, but he was to become Hokage, the strongest of Konoha, the ideal figure of a shinobi, but if this is what needed to protect the people, then so be it. He would protect those precious to him, just as Haku wanted him, I accept. Naruto said, with his head raised and fire burning in his eyes. 
some of them were taken back by the overwhelming conviction in his eyes that promised his 110% on the job. They all smiled, even Danzo almost cracked a smile as they saw him and his determination. They saw the will of fire in his eyes. All right then, but there are a few things you should know if you are to be Hokage. The fire daimyo said as he motioned for Jiraiya to step forward. Naruto was confused as Jiraiya got on a knee to be eye level with him. He had a sad expression on his face and Naruto had a bad feeling about it. Naruto, there have been many times in your life where people have deceived you, lied to you I was one of those people we all were, but on this day and all days forth, there will be no more lies and deceit. We'll give you the truth, no matter how hard it is for you to handle, that I promise you. And we'll start right now Naruto, I'm your godfather. Jiraiya said as Naruto was confused and shocked at first, but more shocked than confused. I know this is all to handle, but it isn't over yet, so stay strong until the end, and you'll be a greater man and person than any of us in this room, okay? Jiraiya said calmly to Naruto as he nodded his head. I know you've asked Saratobi sensei who your parents were, and he told you he didn't know, but he did. The reason he didn't tell you was because of the very thing you hold the Kaiubi. He feared that you'd grow to hate others because of it and end up like that kid Gara. He also feared you'd hate him and he just couldn't bear that, so he decided we'd be able to tell you when you were a Jonin or 18 years old. Well, we break that poor decision today. Jiraiya said as Hiyashi stepped up. Jiraiya sama, if it is not too much to ask, I'd like to be the one to tell Naruto about his mother and father. Hiyashi said as Jiraiya nodded and moved over for Hiyashi to kneel down to be leveled with Naruto. Naruto promised himself to remain quiet until everything was said. He owed that much to his grandfather figure. Even though the old man had lied to him each day, he was still the closest thing to family Naruto had back then. Naruto, I know we may not know each other well, but I knew your father and mother very well. I won't kneel here and tell you of what great people they were, because that could take all night and day, so I get straight to the point. Your father and mother were, Kishina Yuzumaki and Minato Namikaze, the Yandame Hokage. Your true name is Naruto Yuzumaki Namikaze. The Ashi said as Naruto cried silent tears. He now knew his family didn't abandon him. But that led a question in his mind, to which Jiraiya predicted. Naruto, the reason your father sealed the Kaiubi inside of you is because he could never ask another to give their child if he could not give his. He sealed the Kaiubi into believing you were the only one to be able to carry such a burden and not hate those around you. And I know he was right. Jiraiya said as Naruto sobbed silently at hearing his father's conviction and confidence in him. Your mother was a great woman herself. In fact, I believe your personality is almost exactly like your mother's, aside from the confidence, potential, and determination you get from your father. She was a beautiful woman as well. Although, she had a quick temper, loved Raymond more than her husband's life, and was a loud motor mouth, Tiashi said with a chuckle as he remembered the old days. I was on a Genin team with your father and Tucci the Raymond chef. We were trained by Jiraiya Sama as Genin, and then your father continued training under Jiraiya Sama. Your mother was trained by Tsunade Sama, another of the three legendary Sanin, along with my wife, Haim Hayuga, and Sasuke Chiha's mother, Makoto Chiha. The Ashi said as Naruto looked a bit shocked that old man Tucci had been trained alongside his dad. Was Tucci as powerful as Hiyashi or his dad then? Naruto, you should also know that you're from two clans, the Namikas and Yuzumaki. Both of which you are the last of. So you'll need to have a harem to revive them. We know it may be difficult Hiyashi started nervously, fake nervousness, but was cut off by Jiraiya, who snorted in disbelief. Jiraiya then wrapped an arm around Naruto's shoulder, as if he was some kind of car salesman. The women of the room growled at him as, Naruto, my dear boy, you have a golden opportunity. You get to have multiple women who'll all marry you. Multiple women, Naruto. You need at least four, but the sky's the limit on how many you can have. I'd kill to be in your shoes. But remember Naruto, only chose for love and nothing else. Oh, and not that girl Sakura, she's just all wrong for you. A great sister a friend, but wrong for a wife. Gureya said as Naruto nodded his head. He loved Sakura, but not like that anymore. Maybe he could give Hinata a try. She was always nice to him. Also, the Namikas and Yuzumaki clans had bloodlines, but you'll need your clan scrolls for that. Other than that I believe we've covered everything so Naruto, do you have anything to say? The daimyo asked as Naruto dried his tears with his sleeves. When his eyes were dried the others gasped as the burning fire in them was brighter than ever. They all smiled at him as he smirked back. Dust one let's get started. Chapter 3. A heart to hawk. When Naruto headbutts with Danzo to show the old warhawk that he won't be pushed around. Naruto also has a nice chat with Hiyashi. That's who's in the village for Naruto. The next day, Naruto was in the Hokage office, his office, with shadow clones running about doing G all the work that had piled up, while Himura and Kahara were instructing them on what to do. The real Naruto was reading through B rank and higher mission reports and placing them in two piles, success and failure. He was glad to see that only three of the 200 reports he had read were in the failure pile. 
It was then his secretary walked into the fray of clones and papers. Um Hokage-sama, Danzo-sama is here to see you should I send him in? She asked as she looked around. All the clones started organizing the papers better and put them away in a matter of seconds when Naruto nodded. The secretary left the room as Hamura and Kaharu turned and walked toward Naruto. I don't know why you accepted to meet with him, Hokage-sama. He lowly tried to play for power. Kaharu said as she stood in front Naruto's Hokage desk while Hamura nodded beside her. I thought that as well, but there was a man like Danzo once. His name was Abusa, and he believed everyone was a tool to achieve his goals, but in the end he learned they weren't. I think Danzo and him are a lot alike, so I think I know how to deal with him. Naruto said as Danzo came walking in like he owned the place. The clones worked in silence as he entered the room. Having shadow clones do the work, while well, the real you has meetings. Impressive young Naruto, given the shadow clone's ability to send information back to the original. Danzo commented as he watched Naruto like a hawk. Naruto was shocked by the bit of info, but hid it under a yawn. He'd have to remember that for later. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of work since early morning, but we've just about finished. Anyways, what did you wish to see me about, Danzo? Naruto said as he leaned forward in his chair. How do you plan to rebuild the village as it now falls to you, Naruto? Danzo said with a smirk on his face as he watched Naruto. He refused to call this boy Hokage-sama. The other two elders caught the lack of respect, but Naruto waved it off. I've sent out a message to Wave, and they have said they're not only sending aid and people to help us rebuild, but also an alliance treaty at seeing my signature as the new Hokage. Naruto said coolly as Danzo almost blinked at that. We have not even announced your ascension to the village or the civilian council yet. Also, what would you do about Orochimaru? Danzo said as Naruto was visible and thought over that. The two elders merely stood there, watching things unfold, as Danzo tested Naruto's ability to lead. There's not much we can do. I mean, Orochimaru is one of the Sanin, so nothing short of a Sanin can stop just him, and as the only Sanin we have is Jureya-sensei, then we can't do anything but wait until the perfect time to strike. Naruto said as they all thought of that. It was true that Orochimaru could only be stopped by people of his equal, and they weren't about to send Jureya alone, so there really was nothing they could do. Also, we'll need to send more of our ninja out to show the other lands that Kanoha is still stronger than them, so I'll be taking control of your root ninja. Naruto said calmly as the others looked shocked, especially Danzo. H how did you know about my root Anbu? Danzo asked as Hamura and Kaharu wanted to know as well. Naruto rubbed the back of his head in embarrassment as all eyes were on him, like a kid caught doing things they weren't supposed to. Well you see, I noticed that on the registry we have 500 ninja who were counted alive in the village as of this morning, but we have a total populace count of 1100 as of today. So, I looked over the civilian registry count and we only had 300 people classified as civilians. I then read through the hidden registry and found that you have a root program of ninja who make a total count of 300, which makes up for the imbalance in the numbers. Also, your program is listed under the Hokage's signature, so I can take command of your operatives at any moment I chose. Naruto said, slightly embarrassed that he was put on the spot, but the others were wide-eyed. Naruto, the 13-year-old Hokage, had caught and cornered Danzo, the 68-year-old Warhawk, where not even Suratobi or anyone else had. Danzo did the only thing he could after hearing that. I'll have them ready for your command as soon as this meeting is over. Danzo said as he was still stunned. His respect for Naruto had grown in just that small reveal of simple intelligence that everyone else had overlooked. Thank you Danzo, now is there anything else you need? Naruto said as he leaned back in his chair. Danzo shook his head to get out of his daze as he gazed at Naruto with a far more watchful eye. Yes, I am still concerned about your ideology with regards to our village and the ninja world in particular. Danzo said as he and the other elders watched Naruto. To them it was like watching a heated battle, cat and mouse, and for once in their long ninja lives, they couldn't tell which was the cat and which was the mouse. I see, you want to see if I can make the tough decisions when it comes to the village and others as well. Well, have no fear, because even I know when some threats need to be put down. I'll do what is needed of me, because I accepted this title to protect this village, and I'll do that even if it causes my heart 100 pains. Naruto said with conviction as Danzo nodded, his respect growing just a bit more. Homura looked at Kaharu as they grew worried that Naruto would be as they feared Danzo would have been. Danzo turned and walked to the door and was about to leave when Naruto spoke. Oh and Danzo, that's Hokage-sama to you, because you should know that I lead this village now, and those who can't show the proper respect or who stand in the way of peace and justice, can be dealt with as well, right? Naruto said as a chill went through Danzo's spine at the ice in Naruto voice as he said the last part. Danzo didn't turn back, but not at all the same. Of course Hokage-sama Danzo said as he walked out and closed the door gently. He now knew that Naruto really was the perfect choice as Hokage. That meant since Naruto was only 13, that he still had plenty of room to grow. Danzo shrugged as he was alone in the hallway. 
Since I can't become Hokage now maybe I'll stand for assisting the new Hokage, but how? Danzo mused as he walked from the building. Maybe he'd be more than what people thought of him, maybe he'd be greater, but Naruto. Naruto sighed loudly as the door to his office closed and he sunk into his chair. His once calm and stone-like face gave a huge grin as he looked at his two advisors. So, what did you think of tough guy Naruto? He said as they looked shocked. That was all just an act. Kaharu asked as Hamura chuckled a bit along with Naruto. Yeah, I saw Gramps do it to some ninja who were arguing over a mission report. He said that sometimes you gotta be tough and show people you're not too kind. Then he said to never let it take away from the kind spirits we all have. Naruto explained as Kaharu gaped like a fish. I thought I recognized Hiruzen's kind king, evil ruler mask act. Hokage-sama, you're a natural. Hamura said with a smile as he regained his composure. He was old, and Naruto was just what the old needed reminders of, the good times they had in their youth. Kaharu had to chuckle a bit as she finally remembered having been with Hiruzen when he came up with that. It was nice to be reminded of the good times they had with Hiruzen, with his death still fresh in everyone's mind. Naruto was so much like he was back then. Yeah well, he was a great Hokage I'll miss him, but he'll keep his memory alive by wearing that hat and those robes over there when I'm announced. Naruto said as he pointed to his Hokage hat and robes on the coat hanger by the door. Some of the clones started dispelling and Naruto's mind ran a mile a minute. Whoa well, Naruto said in childlike wonder at the flood of memories from his clones. Why don't we get out of the office for a bit? I'm starting to see why Hiruzen tried to find every reason he could out of here. Hamura said as he looked around the office when they had nodded. They had been working since 5 am, and now it was almost noon. If it wasn't for the clones that paperwork could have taken weeks, if not months. Alright, I still need to be back here to talk to Pervy Sage at 1 pm, though. Send an Anbu to get me if I'm not back by then. Naruto said as the last of the clones dispelled. He rubbed his head and ran out of the office as the two scholarly advisors chuckled softly at seeing him do so. He's full of life, isn't he? Hamura said with a small smile as Kahara nodded with a small smile of her own. That he is Hamura Kun that he is she replied as they took their leave of the office as well. At Team 7's meeting spot, where's Naruto Baka, he's late. Sakura screeched as Sasuke covered his ears. I don't know. Just like I didn't know five minutes ago. Sasuke yelled back at her as she gave an embarrassed look and a mumbled apology. Sasuke merely grunted and returned to brooding, but then he saw someone. There's your dope. Sasuke said as he pointed to the running Naruto coming their way. Naruto stopped skidding across the bridge and came to a stop. Naruto Baka, where have you been? Sakura yelled as she was about to hit him across the head, but Asuma had her hand in his grip as he and Kakashi flashed onto the scene. He gave her a stern look that she had never seen on him before. I don't think that's such a good idea, Sakura. Kakashi said with an eye smile as Asuma released her from his grip and she rubbed her wrist. He had a real tight grip on it. Almost as if he was about to snap it. Naruto, shouldn't you be helping out the village? Like a Hokage would? Asuma asked in a sort of code as Naruto shook his head. I've got an hour before I have to meet the pervy sage and then I can go back to helping. Naruto replied as he understood what Asuma was asking. Sasuke narrowed his eyes as he tried to understand what they were talking about, but he couldn't. Naruto Baka, we've got missions to do. The Shinobi Council has taken over until a new Hokage is appointed. You can talk to that old creep later, you idiot. Now come on, let's go. Sakura said as she moved to grab Naruto, but Asuma grabbed her wrist again and applied pressure. Like Kakashi said Sakura, that's not such a good idea. Naruto, instead of meeting here with them, why don't you go help out around the village? The council has done such a good job of organizing today's missions that there's actually a shortage of them today. Asuma said as he and Naruto knew that it was really Naruto and his clones who had organized the missions for the day. Naruto nodded and ran back out into the village as Asuma had let Sakura's wrist go and blurred away. Kakashi sighed as he told Sakura and Sasuke that they could go today, but told Sasuke to meet him later while he disappeared like always. Sasuke watched as Naruto and Kakashi left. His eyes narrowed as he watched Sakura rubbing her wrist. Those two were up to something, but what? With Naruto, he had been around the village and spoken to all the jonin around, with each of them giving nothing but good reports. He was then walking down the street when he saw the person he had wanted to talk to all day. Hey Hinata. Naruto said as he ran to her. She saw him and her mind ran at high speed as to comprehend what Naruto could possible want with her. Hello, Naruto-kun Hinata said as she blushed when he was standing in front of her. Hinata, I know we don't know each other well, but I'd like it if you'd go out with me on a D-date. I mean, you've always been nice to me and you're always concerned about me, so I think we should get to know each other. Naruto said nervously as Hinata turned bright red and nodded before fainting on the spot. Naruto sighed as he looked around to be sure no one was watching him. He caught Sasuke watching from behind a corner, so he picked Hinata up and carried her bridal style to her clan compound. The guard stopped him at the gate and summoned Hiashi. 
When Hiashi saw who was at the gate he grew wide-eyed as he rushed to it. Let him in you fools, it is Naruto Uzumaki. The one who helped our clan grow closer. I apologize as Uzumaki-san as they did not know who you were or your newest statue. Hiashi said as he arrived at the gate. Naruto only smiled and waved it off as they bowed to him. Hiashi and Naruto caught Sasuke watching them, so they walked into the Hayuga compound so the boy couldn't follow. No need for apologizes or formalities, Hiashi-sama. I'm still just Naruto. Naruto said as they walked into the compound. Pleasant and humble, those are good qualities in a leader, Naruto-sama. Hiashi said as Naruto sighed. What did I just say? Naruto asked tiredly as Hiashi chuckled and patted him roughly on the back. In the immortal words of both your father and your mother, especially her, everything people tell me to do goes in one ear and out the other. Hiashi said with mirth as Naruto chuckled a bit. That sounds like something I'd say. Naruto said as Hiashi nodded with an amused smile on his face. They finally reached Hinata's room and Naruto laid her down on her bed. He and Hiashi then went to the tea room and Hiashi closed the door as seals glowed slightly before fading away. He turned back to Naruto who had a curious look on his face. Sound and identity seals, only Hinata or Hanabi could get in now. Hiashi replied to the unasked question on Naruto's face. Naruto nodded as he and Hiashi sat down. So how goes the recovery? Hiashi asked as he poured tea for Naruto and himself. Naruto took a sip of his tea before replying with a smile. It goes well. The main areas that Orochimaru hit will be cleared of debris by tomorrow. It seems that Wave got their aid here on the double and had arrived this morning from the message I sent after our meeting yesterday. They sent an old friend from my first C rank mission as the head carpenter. His name is Tazuna, have you heard of him? Naruto said as Hiashi nodded with a smirk. Yes, I have and I've heard of the great Naruto bridge as well. Hiashi says as Naruto coughed a bit from hearing that last part. He named the bridge after me. Naruto said with a raised eyebrow as Hiashi nodded. He had no clue that the people would name the bridge after him. That was just wow. Everyone knows of you as the savior of Wave, well at least all those who care of news from outside Konoha. Hiashi said as Naruto gave him a look. You mean the clan heads, elite Chunin and higher, but not the civilians or the civilian council. Naruto asked as Hiashi nodded. Yes, I fear the civilians and those on the civilian side of the council have gotten too comfy in their leisure to remember they are not above the rest of the world. Hiashi said as Naruto looked deep in thought. Is that why they weren't at the meeting to appoint me yesterday? Naruto asked as Hiashi twitched a bit, but not at all the same. Yes, we all know they would have outright opposed you as Hokage, but also, because in times such as these only the Shinobi Council, the village elders, and we clan heads hold power of the village. You as Hokage lead us all, but remember Naruto, no matter what anyone else says, this village is a dictatorship, not a democracy. You rule the people, all of us, even me, so know that no one is above you, and if they cannot see reason, then they can just as easily be banished if not worst. Hiashi said as Naruto looked visible in thought. Thanks, Hiashi-sama I'll be sure to remember that. Naruto said as he was still in thought. Hiashi chuckled and gave Naruto a nudge. Don't be so formal with me. I'm sure the way Hinata stalks you, you'll be calling me father-in-law in no time. Hiashi said casually with a smirk as Naruto spit out his tea and turned to Hiashi with a shocked face. She stalks me? Naruto yelled in disbelief as Hiashi chuckled. Like your mother stalked Minato for those five months after he saved her, but that's another story for another day. If you ever want to hear any, I'm always free. Hiashi said a bit too happily and nicely. Naruto blinked as he looked at the bright smile Hiashi had on his face. Paperwork. Naruto asked as Hiashi's face deflated and he nodded quickly with a slight chuckle. I see you faced a cage and clan head's worst enemy today, but you look far better than Minato did on his first day. Hiashi noted as Naruto sat in a more relaxed manner. Yup, and I've defeated it. It was pretty tough, but I managed to get through about all of this month and next month's forms and request. Naruto said with pride as Hiashi grabbed him by his collar and shook him like a rag doll. How did you do it? How damn it, how? Hiashi asked, in hysterically serious anger that was completely unbecoming of a clan head, as he continued to shake the poor boy. As Shadow Sea clones Naruto said as Hiashi cursed under his breath and made a clone to handle his paperwork. Well now I really am free all day. Thank you Hokage-sama, you've now helped me with four problems in my life. Hiashi said with a smile as Naruto looked at him in confusion. Four, but that was two. The bringing your family closer and the paperwork. What else did I help you with? Naruto asked as Hiashi sat up straighter. You've also helped me with my problem of what to do with Hinata. I was worried that I'd have to place the caged bird seal on one of my children, but since Hinata loves you that won't be a problem. Also, you've helped me realize that I need to spend more time with my family instead of with the past. I spend so much time reflecting on the past mistakes that it hurt my family and in the end it brought nothing but more problems. Hiashi said as Naruto's mind was still stuck on the fact Hinata loved him. 
Garudo-sama, I have but one more favor to ask of you before anything else. I know you have helped me and my family much, but I feel I must ask this of you. Hiashi said, almost begged, as Naruto shook his head of his thoughts. Sure Hiashi, anything. Naruto said, but got the strangest feeling those were the wrong words. Marry my daughter. Hiashi said as he bowed to Naruto, while the latter's eyes were wide with pure shock in them. But neither noticed the door to the room had been opened, and two figures were standing there in the doorway with shock on their faces as well. Naruto knew he couldn't go back on his word now. He never goes back on his word, so now that he was Hokage that would mean everything. Besides, Hinata was a kind, caring, and if not a bit quiet and weird, sweet girl. So, he steeled himself as he prepared to do something no one his age should have to. Yes, Hiashi-sama, I'll take Hinata-chan as my first wife. Naruto said with slight confidence as Hiashi sat up straight from his cushion and gave Naruto a smile, and then his face turned to horror as he looked behind Naruto. Naruto was confused and looked behind himself as well, only to see Hinata and Hanabi, just as Hinata fainted with the biggest smile on her face. In the village, Akashi was standing outside of a normal tea shop reading his book as Asuma and Kurunai came up. Hey guys you two seem to be getting along well. Kakashi said with a slightly amused tone in his lazy voice. Kurunai blushed and looked away, but Asuma didn't react at all. It it, Anko just asked me to pick up some dango for her. Kurunai said as she was still blushing. And what are you doing here besides catching up on your reading? Asuma asked Kakashi as he knew the man wasn't just here by coincidence. He glanced up and down the street but saw nothing out of the ordinary. I need to buy something to put on a grave. Kakashi said as they both caught on to the lie quickly. Asuma then knew something was seriously wrong for Kakashi to blatantly lie like that, so they all played it cool and followed with it. Plus I'm meeting somebody here, Kakashi said with a glance into the tea shop they were standing outside of. Asuma and Kurunai glanced in there as well seeing two people with black cloaks with red cloud patterns and bamboo hats on. The two seemed a bit too relaxed, but even Kurunai could tell they were powerful. Just waiting on Sasu Kakashi said as one of the people gripped his cup harder and made his ring strap against it, causing a noticeable noise that made Kurunai jump slightly, and Asuma tensed as they all continued to watch the two. The two suddenly vanished into thin air as Sasu approached Kakashi. Kakashi, it's not like you to be earlier. Sasu commented as he reached them. Kakashi and the others didn't even turn to him as they looked toward each other. Kakashi gave the two Jonin a look, and Asuma and Kurunai nodded as they jumped into the air and blurred from sight. With Naruto, he and Hiashi had just been about to explain things. They were now dealing with a fainted Hinata and an angry Hanabi when an Anbu ninja appeared outside the door. Okajama, urgent news from Anbu Patrol 5. The Anbu said from his knelt position. Hanabi would have seemed shocked if Hiashi hadn't struck a pressure point to the back of her neck, knocking her out, as the Anbu appeared. Hiashi motioned the Anbu into the room as he and Naruto had serious looks on their faces. Hiashi closed the door and reactivated the seals as they began. Report Naruto said as he was in full hokage mode. He was starting to get used to it as Anbu had been appearing before him since 5 am. Anbu Patrol 5 was alerted by Might Guy, who has spotted Itachi Ichiha and Kisum Hashigaki by the river that runs through Konoha. What are your orders sir? The Anbu ate as he lifted his head to show his bird mask. Bird, I want you and Boar's squad to assist any ninja which are trying to apprehend them. If Guy spotted those two taking a casual stroll through my village, then chances are some jonin like Kakashi sensei have to. Naruto said as Bird nodded and Shunshinette away. Naruto and Hiashi then got up and walked out toward the Hokage Tower after making two clones to take the girls to their rooms. You're smarter and better at this than your reports and grades ever suggested. Hiashi said with a smirk while Naruto shrugged. What can I say, grades and reports aren't everything. Naruto said with his own smirk. You know, you're the perfect example that our ninja need. Hiashi said proudly. Thanks Naruto said quietly as they finally reached the tower, with Jiraiya already outside. I know, now we should we go greet our guest and give them a proper Kanoha welcome. Jiraiya said with a grin as Naruto and Hiashi grinned back. Well, I did miss my morning training, Naruto said as Jiraiya placed a hand on his shoulder. And I forgot my morning exercise. Oh well, this may cup for it. Hiashi said as he and Jiraiya used the shunshin to teleport to the fight. At the river, Itachi needed to get away and Kakashi knew too much. Itachi didn't want to use the Tsukiyomi on Kakashi, but it was unavoidable. Damn his now blurring eyesight and lack of chakra. Kissum, we'll take Kakashi with us. We don't need the others, get rid of them. Itachi spoke in monotone as Kissum charged forward with his sword, shark skin. Severleaf hurricane. Guy exclaimed as he knocked Kissum away with a spinning back kick which held much speed and power. It was then Naruto, Jiraiya and Hiashi arrived. As soon as they had Naruto made a 100 clones, and Hiashi blurred forward to strike Itachi with a gentle fist. Itachi evaded most of the strikes, but he couldn't dodge them all, due to his blurring eyesight and lack of chakra. 
Itachi's leg stopped working as Hiashi caught him with two palm strikes to each, and Hiashi disabled his whole body from there. Bissum got up and saw what happened, but not before Hiashi and Jiraiya were fast upon him as well. He tried to swing Sharkskin down on them, but each time he did a clone took the hit, and Hiashi disabled a part of Kisum's body each time until the blue shark-like man was unconscious. After about 10 minutes the fighting was over, and the Anbu came out and took the two away. Someone get Kakashi-sensei to a hospital, he looks like crap. Naruto exclaimed as an Anbu nodded and took Kakashi away. The Ashi, call the shinobi council and clan heads for an emergency meeting and Jiraiya, you get the elders. I want to know why Itachi Ichiha has done what he's done, without involving Ibiki or Anko. Kiss him however, they'll be needed against him. Naruto said in a stern voice as they both nodded to him before an Anbu took him to his office. You know, he kinda scared me just then. Jiraiya said as Hiashi simply nodded. Yes just imagine once you start training him. Hiashi said as he went to collect the clan heads and shinobi council, while Jiraiya hunted down the three ever elusive elders. Things would certainly be interesting from now on. Chapter 4. Truth and Training in the Council Chambers. So that's it, huh? Naruto said quietly as Itachi nodded his head. Naruto sat back in his chair at the head of the council table and rubbed his temples. It couldn't have been drugs. It couldn't have been money. It couldn't have been him just plain going insane like they were told. No, it had to be that his clan wanted to revolt against the village. Naruto sighed as he lifted his cold gaze at his three advising elders, who flinched back from never seeing eyes filled with such cold fire in them. Explain Naruto commanded as Hamura stood up. Okajama, they would have demolished any other ninja we had sent. We also needed someone in the clan to be a spy, and that was completely loyal to the village. Itachi was the only imperfect choice. Hamura explained as his fellow two elders nodded. So you ruin the life of one good person, because my predecessor, the third Hokage, allowed the civilian council to control the academy. You ruin Itachi Sen's life because he was willing to kill his family. Are you three morons? Naruto spoke as his anger rose with each question. Everyone flinched back at the sheer rage in his tone. They all looked to him as his eyes glowed red and his features became more feral. He then started taking deep breaths and calmed himself down as he returned to normal. I'll need someone to teach me to control the Kyuubi's power anyways, Itachi, you are to be our spy into this Akatsuki. Once you have all the necessary information, you are to report back to me, understood. Naruto said as Itachi nodded. Yes, Hokage-sama Itachi replied in his monotone voice as Naruto turned back to his council. Nara-san, what do you believe would be best in this situation? I do plan to return Itachi to the village, and I'm sure the people will not take well to that due to the mistakes of my predecessor. Naruto said as he knew the people, shinobi and civilian alike, would hate Itachi almost as much as the civilians hated him. I think the truth would be best, Hokage-sama, since anything else would just blow up in our face later on like right now. Shikaku said as he laid his head on the table. Naruto nodded his own head in agreement. He would not lie to his people, not like he was lied to. Itachi, what do you know of this Akatsuki as of now? Inoichi asked as Itachi closed his eyes in thought. Akatsuki is a criminal organization of S-class missing nin and is the most wanted group in the entire shinobi world. Their main goal is to collect all of the tailed beasts for their plan of world domination. Itachi said as the others of the room grew wide-eyed and gasped. Naruto unconsciously let a hand rub his stomach as Jiraiya patted his shoulder. Akatsuki, at any given time, is composed of no more than 10 primary members, all of whom are S-rank criminals. Members always work in teams of two, with the exception of Zetsu, who functions as the organization spy, and they make use of their unique skills to the team's advantage. Team members must function very well together, or at least stand each other to accomplish their task, even though they have mutual problems with each other. The organization is rarely fully assembled though. Itachi said and then paused briefly to let the information sink in. The members of Akatsuki as of now are, myself, Kisum, Dadara of Iwa, Sasori of the Red Sand, Hide in the Immortal, Kakuzu of the Five Hearts, Konin the Paper Angel, Nagato the Fake Leader, Zetsu the Human Flight Trap, and Madara Chiha the Real Leader. Itachi said with the others gaping and gasping at the names, especially the last. But how? He should be dead of old age by now. Kaharu said with her mouth agape. She remembered that the man was about 38 when she was born, so that would make him 105 years old right now. I think we should all know that in the ninja world, we are to expect the unexpected. Naruto said sagely as he sat back and rubbed his temples. He really didn't need those kind of worries. If what he read from their bingo book pages was right then not even Kakashi-sensei could take any of them on now. Maybe with some training. Also you should know, Hokage-sama, that Madara was the reason for the Kaiubi's attack on the day of your birth. Itachi said with his eyes on Naruto as Naruto's face showed complete shock. Naruto shook his head, leaving those thoughts for another day. 
Um, since we're being brutally honest here, and I did promise I wouldn't lie or hide anything from you anymore, Naruto you should probably know that two of the people he mentioned I trained. Jiraiya said while he scratched his head in embarrassment and gave a cheesy grin as Naruto merely raised an eyebrow. For some reason I'm not surprised. Just tell us which ones and how long ago. Naruto said as he began massaging his temples again. Damn this was his first real day on the job and he already had crap to deal with. It was Nagato and Conan, but it was back in the Second Great Shinobi World War. They looked after themselves until I found them. I gave them food and taught them how to use ninjutsu so that they could defend themselves. After three years of training, I was happy enough with their progress that I returned to Konoha, leaving them to forge their own future as shinobi. Last I had heard they were dead. Jiraiya said with a completely serious face as Naruto sighed. Alright, here's what we're going to do so far. Itachi, you and Kisum will do whatever it is that you do, but be back here on my call. Also, due to the mental stress Kakashi Sensei is in, no one at our hospital can heal him, so first we need to find a healer, since we can't do much about the other stuff that's been brought to our attention, but I still want information on each and every one in Akatsuki. Naruto said as they nodded and Jiraiya grew a smirk on his face. If it's a healer you need, look no further, cause I know the perfect one. Jiraiya exclaimed as Naruto gazed at him weirdly. And that would be? Naruto said as Jiraiya grinned at him. Tsunade Senju, the Slug Princess, and Slug Sanin of Konoha Jiraiya, exclaimed as he did a goofy dance. But she hasn't been back here in ages. She said she'd never return to this village. Kaharu said as Naruto looked at her. I don't give a damn if she has or hasn't, cause she will. Naruto said as he sat up in his chair. Alright then, it's settled, me and Naruto will head out and find Tsunade. Jiraiya said as the council grew wide-eyed. You can't, he's the Hokage now and he needs to stay in the village. Kaharu said as Hamura and Danzo nodded. I know that, but he's not going to be announced until everything is calm and done with, besides I still need to start his training, and it'll be a good time to do so. Jiraiya said with a small smirk as the elders looked to one another. There's something you're not telling us, Jiraiya. Out with it. Hamura said sternly as Jiraiya gave him a grin. Nothing gets past you old fossils. There is a way for Naruto to run the village and travel with me. A blood clone would be able to do so. Jiraiya said as Hamura and Kahara looked to one another in uncertainty. The blood clone would be able to the blood clone could also use the shadow clone jutsu, and the information from them would even be shared with the real original, he could also keep up with more training that way. Being able to learn and master things, which would normally take years, in a matter of days, he'd even be able to act as a normal ninja with the blood clone doing the normal work of the hokage, I say we do it. Danzo mused over as he finally decided to go with Yurei's plan. The others nodded after hearing him. Alright then, pack your things Naruto, cuz after I teach you this jutsu we're out of here tomorrow. Jiraiya said as he disappeared in a plume of smoke. Naruto called a break to the meeting and went to pack his things. He now lived in the Hokage mansion, so he didn't have to far to go to his new mansion from the council chambers. He packed his things and then went back to the meeting once the break was done. Alright everyone, since I'm about to leave the village there are some things we must get straight. Well the real me is absent only elite Chunin and higher will receive missions directly from my clone. Those lower than that rank will receive them from the council, since everyone believes you're giving the missions anyway. Also, I'll be gone for at least two weeks, so I appoint Shikaku Nara as head of the council until my return. Danzo, you and Dragon will maintain the route and regular Anbu. Hamura and Kaharu, you two shall head the civilian council, since they'll try anything to gain power in my absence, mostly because they are unaware that I was made Hokage. The rest of my orders are to act as you always have, with Kanoha's best interest at heart, and right now that is a strong face and kind heart. Naruto said in a commanding voice, yet it was still kind and smooth as he smiled at them. Even Danzo and Hiyashi cracked small smiles at him. Then Hiyashi remembered something. Okajama, what of the Chunin exams? I'm sure Saratobi sama had chosen his picks already from the preliminaries. Hiyashi said as he stood to address his young leader. Naruto nodded sagely as that was something he forgot. Yes, and I must agree with those he picked, but I will not announce them now. I will do it when I return, as well as my introduction to the village. Is there anything more? Naruto said as he looked around and no one spoke. He called the end of the meeting as Jiraiya came up to him and they walked out. Anzo and Hiashi watched as the two walked out. He just might be the best hokage this village has ever seen. Hiashi said with a smile as Danzo nodded. I must admit that at first I was opposed to him, but he seems to have what the others lacked, the very reason I wanted to be hokage in the first place. He has a kind heart, but a stronger mind and sense of judgment. He doesn't let his heart stop him from taking the actions which need to. I realize now what a fool I've been for still lusting for the title of hokage. If I had been I would have waged war with everyone, thinking that would be the only solution. It's thanks to a talk I had with him that allowed me to think. Danzo said as he actually looked at him. Danzo was smiling, and that was scary. Oh, and what was it he made you think about? 
Hiashi asked as Danzo looked toward him. He told me he'd do what needed to be done, even if it cost his heart 100 pains. You see, unlike what people believe, I've always done things for the sake of the village, not simply me. My beliefs differed from those of the former Hokages as I feel that the village should be placed above all else, even one's heart. I didn't hate the previous Hokage's beliefs, but I did think poorly of them. I just preferred to directly eliminate threats through assassination and execution, rather than diplomacy and negotiation the others would try, but now, I believe that Naruto has combined the best of both ideals, putting the village first, but doing it with care. He seems to use his kind heart to help people see his way, but if they don't he'll deal with them, unlike Hiruzen would have. Hiruzen and the others felt that if things were left alone, they'd work themselves out, but Naruto knows otherwise. He knows that people can be changed for the better, but if they can't then he knows they don't belong in this world, a world that needs people like him. Danzo explained as Hiashi nodded. He may not have liked Danzo before, but now maybe he might. That boy really can change people for the better I just hope it works on Tsunade Sama Hiashi said, as he and Danzo walked out with Danzo nodding to the thought. With Naruto and Jiraiya. Alright Naruto I'll show you the jutsu now. Jiraiya said as they stopped near the front gate. Naruto nodded as he was eager to learn a new jutsu. Now, before I do, I need to let you know about it first. The blood clone is very much like the shadow clone, except it won't dispel until you dismiss it. It will do everything you would do, even your thought process and it can use jutsu as well. Now I want you to draw blood from your thumb and make the ram hand sign. Focus your charka as you would for a shadow clone, and then go into all the hand signs of a summoning and finish with the shadow clone hand seal. Jiraiya explained as Naruto nodded and did as he was instructed. Ninja art. Blood clone Jutsu Naruto said as a clone popped up next to him in a haze of crimson smoke. Jiraiya looked it over and then punched it into a wall with it forming a crater the shape of its body. Hey, what the hell was that for? The blood clone yelled as he walked out of the crater like it was nothing. Jiraiya looked to Naruto for the answer as Naruto shrugged. I have a high pain tolerance Naruto said with his shrug. Again, sorry for not being there kid Jiraiya said as he knew he added Charka to that punch. He wasn't Tsunade, but that could have laid a Jonin ninja out for a week. Like I said on the way here, it wasn't your fault. You needed to watch Orochimaru and the Akatsuki. Naruto said as he waved off the apology. Jiraiya sighed as Naruto turned to the clone. You know what to do right? He asked his clone as the clone nodded and jumped to the roofs to get back to the Hokage Tower. You ready to head out? Jiraiya asked when the clone was out of sight. Yup. Naruto exclaimed with a smile. He was always excited to get out of the village. Plus he would finally be able to get some real training done. The duo of master and apprentice disembarked from the village. Their goal, find Tsunade Senju and bring her back to the village. But the gen in a training ground 7, later. Hey, guys, did you know that Naruto left with that old guy Jiraiya a little while ago to go find some Tsunade person? Kiba asked as he reached the spot the others were. The only one who didn't look surprised was Shino. Then again, you could never really tell the expression on Shino's face, or tell how he was feeling, as he always sounded the same. Hinata fidgeted nervously as her face went red, but they all ignored it. Sasuke gave a snort as he didn't care, and Sakura followed his every action. Really? Ino asked nervously as she had long since stopped being a Sasuke fangirl. After she heard what Naruto had done to protect his friends, it opened her eyes to the truth about a lot of things. Yeah. I heard on the way here that they left a little while ago. It doesn't matter to me, but I thought his team might want to know. Kiba replied with a shrug as Sasuke snorted again. I don't care what he does, so long as he's not here to get in my way. Sasuke said as he leaned against a tree. Yeah, that idiot is probably going away cause he tried to be cooler than Sasuke-kun when the sand and sound invaded. We all know Sasuke-kun was the one to beat that demon Gara. No one gets in Sasuke-kun's way. Sakura exclaimed as Sasuke simply took the credit for the fight when people asked about it. No one would believe the dope would actually win a fight. Why not take some Anbu or Hyuga then too? Shikamaru asked as he, along with Hinata and Shino, knew who Tsunade was. Because Jiraiya was only allowing one person along with him, so he chose Naruto. Don't know why, but he must wanted to teach the dope how to eat something other than Raymond. Right, Hinata. Kiba said as he nudged her. She gave him a scary look and he backed away slowly. He turned to Shino, who took a sip of the drink he had brought. Shino didn't say anything, but he and Shikamaru knew something was going on with Naruto. Makes sense. The dope probably can't even spell Raymond Sasuke replied with a smirk as Sakura had hearts in her eyes, but no one else but Kiba paid attention. Do you think there's anything going on between those two? Choji asked Shikamaru as they both noticed Hinata's spike in Charka as she tried to suppress her anger. Who? Naruto and Hinata. Sakura asked as she had overheard them. Hinata epad and went red-faced as she pressed her fingers together as she tried hard not to faint from what she had heard earlier that day. What would make you think Hinata would love a baka like that? Hinata's a Hyuga clan heir and Naruto's a Baka street urchin. 
she would never like him, he's trash. Sakura exclaimed as everyone, but Hinata and Ino, cited her, even Sasuke. They all knew Hinata had loved Naruto for a long time, and Sakura was more oblivious than Naruto to that fact. Hinata and, surprisingly Ino, growled lowly at her for talking about their man. Wait, Ino backtracked, our man. Since when did that happen? I mean Naruto's cute kind, sweet, goofy, exciting okay, it's official, I just started falling in love with Naruto. I mean, he is a great guy after all, but I couldn't do that to Hinata. I couldn't just steal her man, even if I did want him now I'll just tell Hinata how I feel, and see what happens. I'm sure Hinata could help me and I could help her, but I'll tell her later. Ino thought as she looked at Hinata, and then sighed as she resolved herself to do what needed to be done. Shikamaru and Shino, of course, were silent on the matter. The two knew Naruto and Hinata had, at the least, some kind of relationship by the way Hinata was acted, but they weren't going to tell anyone. Shikamaru was just too lazy to do it, as it would cause him a good amount of grief. And Shino, well, he just didn't talk a lot. Although when they saw how Ino was acting they had raised eyebrows as they knew Naruto was gonna be one unlucky bastard if those two had a catfight while he was gone. Itachi just stood on top of the tree across the clearing as he had been watching his brother. He wondered how often his brother smiled or laughed these days, but he could plainly see he didn't. Itachi frowned and narrowed his eyes at Sasuke as he knew his brother took the road he didn't want him to. Damn it Sasuke, why aren't you what I expected you to be? You were supposed to hate me and try not to be like me. You were supposed to want nothing to do with power and only want to live, to find love, to kill me and be done with it. Why can't you see that foolish little brother? Itachi said as Kisum blurred next to him. Time to go catch up with Hokage-sama and Jiraiya-sama. They need the info I have on Madara. Kisum said as he stole a glance at the group of genin. He wondered how long it had been since he and Zabuza had been like that, except those kids were normal. I thought you said you weren't helping them. You said you'd never betray your Mizuki Jitachi said in his normal monotone voice, as he continued to stare at his little brother. I did but then I learned of what Madara did to Naruto-sama, it's kinda like my childhood, and I'd be damned if I don't follow the kid. He took that kinda pain way better than I ever did, and he came out still kind and happy I think I want to see how he does it after my interrogation, Ibiki told me that Naruto has a way of bringing the good out of people, I wanna see him do it to Tsunade-sama. Hisum said with a small smile that Itachi thought he was imagining. Kissum didn't smile, he smirked and grinned, but never smiled. Itachi nodded as he turned from the genin with closed eyes that snapped open to reveal his active Sharingan. Hein I think I want to see this power as well, Itachi said as he and Kissum blurred from the treetop. Sasuke looked over at the treetop and could have sworn he saw his brother, but he saw nothing now that he was really looking at it. Maybe it was just his mind playing tricks on him he then remembered what he had read from the secret Ichiha tablet and he rushed away from the others as he remembered he needed to talk to Kakashi. With Jiraiya and Naruto, they had gotten a good distance from the village and were now in Shikuba town. Jiraiya said he needed to find an informant, so he gave Naruto his belongings, along with the young cage's inheritance, and told him to get a room for the day. Now Naruto was inside the hotel room he had gotten and was reading the letters left for him by his parents. Naruto, if you are reading this message, then I and your father are dead. We asked a Sandame Hokage if he would watch over you in case we were never able to. It seems that it has come to that. You may not have had the chance to know me, but I am your mother, Kishina Yuzumaki. My baby boy, I want you to know that you are a hero Naruto, no matter what anyone tells you, it is because of you that Kanoha still stands today. I'm quite sure that in our last days your father and I have done what I really did not wish to do. You see Naruto, you hold the Kaiubi inside of you. I'm sure if you're old enough that you know this by now, so I won't say too much on that. Just know that I probably disagreed with your father seal him inside of you, but I'm sure in the end, it was too late for any other choice. I would have probably also disagreed with the Saratobi-sama when and if he said that you should never be told of the Kaiubi. I'm sure he didn't tell you, but I'm sure you know by now. I love you Naruto, and so does your father, we know that you are not the demon and that you never will be. You're our greatest little angel. Now on to serious business, Naruto, our people have a strong bloodline, one that will give you power that many have never seen, but you must learn to control it. It is the power to use all five of the elemental charkas, along with yin-yang charka. Once you master it you'll be able to mix them and create sub-elements like wood style. Only truly gifted Yuzumaki awaken our bloodline, and rarely would it have been able to be taught. It is a power which can shake the very countries themselves, as you will also have the Kaiubi increasing that power with his own energies, but you must control it Naruto, as I'm sure you've noticed your crappy chakra control. There is only one way to gain perfect control over this power, but I can't tell you. You must find the answer on your own. You will know Naruto, I believe in you. Naruto, I'm going to finish this letter now, I hope you read all of it, I had to write fast. The doctors tell me it won't be long now until you're born, but I had to finish this one last message to you. 
No matter what happens Naruto, I know that you will make us proud, whether it's in Konoha or elsewhere. I left a few parting gifts as did your father, you should find them in the boxes. Good luck Naruto-kun, I know that you will become the greatest shinobi, and may Hokage of the villages as Minato has always said, even though I know that's not the case. Love, Ishina Yuzumaki, your mother. Naruto cried as he read his mother's last letter. Now he knew he was always loved by them, now he knew he wasn't what the villagers called him. He found an even greater source of determination now, he would make his mother proud. I did it mom, I'm Hokage, but the village is nothing like what dad hoped it was, I'll make you proud, and that's a promise. Believe it. Naruto said as he returned to reading the last of the scroll which was from his dad. He and Naruto. Your mother told me we're making like a time capsule or something for you, so I put in my favorite jutsu, so you can use them someday. In the scroll it contains instructions for the Horatian and the Rasengan, two jutsu I'm very well known for. The Rasengan hasn't gotten completed yet, but I know you can finish it if I don't. The three-pronged kunai are used in conjunction with the Horatian, but not necessary. You can read more from the scroll. Oh yeah and whatever you do Naruto, listen to your motor mouth mother, A.N. I'm sorry, but I had to. It was so funny in the manga and I loved it. Also, our clan had a bloodline so you might inherit it, but I never did. It's called the Dagon, Great King I. My dad had it before he died, so you could have it too. If you don't then you have the elemental star power of your mother's clan, the Uzumaki. The Dagon comes at a price so be sure to read more in the scrolls. See you later Naruto. Love, Minato Namakas, your father, Yandame Hokage. Naruto cried harder as he realized his father didn't even know what would happen to them all. His mother must have been the only one to think ahead he sighed as he wiped away his tears and opened the scroll for the Dagon. The Dagon is a Dejutsu like no other. While many believed it was inferior to the three great Dejutsu it was not. In fact it is far more powerful than they could ever hope to be. This level of power along with the Dagon's true abilities however is only known within the clan, and so we have let others, including our own village, think less of us. What ours know of the Dagon's abilities it that is gives perfect sight, much like a great king sees all within his kingdom, but that is all others know of its power. To read the rest you must gain the Dagon, and that requires a clear mind and the following hand signs. Naruto nodded as he knew exactly what a clear mind meant, he needed to knock himself out after performing the Jutsu. He did the hand signs from the scroll and then focused his charka to his center. He felt himself became sleepy, and then he fell back to the ground with a thud. In Naruto's mindscape, Naruto woke to find himself standing and suddenly a sower he knew was inside of his mind. He followed the sower down two long tunnels and around two corners, ending up in a huge room the size of his former apartment building. On the far wall was a cage door that went wall to wall, and from the floor to the ceiling, it was very intimidating. The only thing that was holding it closed shut was a seal with a kanji for seal on it. It was then two large blood red eyes opened and started Naruto with kindness and sorrow. Okay now he was floored. Ayubi was all Naruto could say as the puffball would be yelling at him or calling him a brat by now, but it looked ready to cry. So my jailer has finally discovered his powers and used the king's rest jutsu to help awaken it and the other. Well I suppose the mirage is over, and I can show you what lies beyond the mask. Kaiubi said with a sigh as he was engulfed in a tornado of flames. When the flames died away in Kaiubi's place was a young woman. She had short spiky orange hair and crimson red eyes. She wore a short black shirt robe with green trimmings, dark pants, with black and white belt that she tied in front with mesh armor underneath. You can turn human and you're a girl. Naruto asked in complete shock since Kaiubi never did that before. Kaiubi just scoffed at him as she stepped between the bars of the cage and laid a hand on Naruto's shoulder, to which shocked Naruto even more. Naruto, if I wanted to I could turn human on the drop of a Ryo coin, but I needed to keep up my mask of aggression and hatred. Do you honestly think I've survived thousands of years being a giant beast of hate and anger? Hell no, I'm smarter than those humans could ever be. That's why as soon as I was sealed into I saw the same power that righteous man had at once. I saw the power of a king in you oh yeah, and if I was really bloodthirsty I could have come out at any time and killed you. Kaiubi said with a smile as she patted Naruto's head like a child. Naruto was completely floored by this as he gaped like a fish. He shook himself to regain his composure as he turned serious eyes to Kaiubi. I've felt smarter and calmer than I've ever felt in my life. I feel so serene and I don't remember ever learning that word you did that didn't you? Naruto asked with narrowed eyes as Kaiubi gave him a fox-like grin and a mock bow. But of course, I couldn't have my host be a moronic hokage could I? Besides, I was going to do it in a couple of months anyway, so I just started earlier but, back to the reason you're here. You're here to acquire the power of the Dagon. I must warn you that it wouldn't be easy. Things are given up to obtain that Dejutsu, and they know of its true power. If you truly wish to gain this blessed yet cursed power, then follow me. Kaiubi said as she walked out of the room with Naruto close behind. They quickly made it to what seemed like a stone tablet. 
Naruto was confused as Kyubi grabbed his hand and placed in on the stone tablet. His body started to glow he began to slowly fade away. Naruto, don't question things from here on out. Just go with the flow and think before you speak. Also, when you get there and see that man you'll have to give something up. Be sure to think before you speak, Naruto-kun. Kaiubi said as she kissed his cheek before he completely faded away. In the thought tower, Naruto didn't know why, but he knew this place like the back of his hand. It confused him, but like Kaiubi said, he just needed to go with the flow. He reached the top of the tower, only to see a floating platform to which he walked to. Ah, I see so you're the next of the Namikas to come here. What is your name young one? A voice said smoothly and calmly. Naruto looked up and saw a young man sipping tea and reading a book as he sat lazily in his throne-like chair in the center of the platform. He had short wavy black hair. He wore a black uniform that seemed to be for a school. His purple eyes gazed over Naruto with disinterest and then excitement as recognition flashed through them. Ah, so it's finally your turn hmm, Naruto. The man said as Naruto simply nodded, not wanting to seem out of the loop on the subject. Good, then you must know why you're here and the requirements of it. The young man said as he sat up straight and gave the presence of a true king. Naruto couldn't help but nod as he felt that anything this man told him would lead to peace and posterity. Good, then allow me to explain who I am. I am Lelich Namikas, and I was the first of the Namikas clan. You see when I first died the world was created anew and I was revived in this era. I still had the powers of my old life so I simply used it. I didn't want anyone trying to steal our power or knowing of it, so I made it to where only select members of the clan had it and only they could use it. After being in this world for about 10 years I joined my clan with a man named Hashirama and his Senju clan. And well, you know the rest of that story. Lelich said as he stood and walked over to Naruto with a kind smile playing on his face. Now on to what must be done for you to receive my power. You must give up something that you possess, and once you give it up you can never have it back. Lelich said with a stone serious face. Naruto placed his chin in his hand as he thought it over. Kaiubi said not to question things, so he wouldn't. Kaiubi said to go with the flow, so he would. Kaiubi also said to think before he spoke and so he was. Now what could he give up that wouldn't seem stupid but wouldn't impair him? Lelich stared at him with his smile back in place. If what he thought and knew about his descendant was true, then Naruto would make a better choice than he when he was alive. I'll give you my hatred. Naruto said as Lelich's smile broadened. He ruffled Naruto's hair as he let out a chuckle of amusement. You've passed my test Naruto. Lelich said as Naruto grew a bit confused. You see the only ones who could hope to have my true power were the ones who would give up a dark trait of theirs. There were others who gave up other things, but only those who would give up their negativity could gain my true blessing, and you just so happened to be the first Lelich said, trailing off as he thought about the stupidity of his clan. If only it hadn't skipped Minato and Naruto was Minato's grandson, so here is my truest blessing, the full potential and power of the Dagon the Kami Dagon. Lelich said as he jabbed two glowing fingers into Naruto's eyes. It didn't hurt his eyes, but his mind was on fire from the sensation. When Lelich pulled his fingers back Naruto fainted and fell off the floating platform. Lelich smiled watching him go down into the inky black darkness of the space. He then went back to his throne and started reading his book again. Waiting another who knows how long for a visitor. Well, at least I have itch itch Lelich said to himself as he giggled perversely. Naruto's mindscape, Naruto awoke with a bad headache. Kaiubi was over him with a worried expression on her face that turned happy when she saw he was waking up. His eyes fluttered open and she gasped at seeing them. They were royal blue color as he fluttered them. They glowed slightly as he sat up keeping them open. You received the blessed eyes of Kami Kaiubi said more to herself than him. He looked at her as she tried to avert her gaze. Naruto you must stop those eyes before you use them on me. Just close your eyes and think of your normal ones. She said as he did so with his eyes returning to their cerulean color. Alright what now? Naruto asked as Kaiubi snapped her fingers and turned into a young man with the same clothes and short red hair. Now it's time for hell, kit. Kaiubi said as he dragged Naruto to the room they would be training in for the next three years, but since it was his mind it would pass in a matter of hours. Three hours later, outside Naruto's mindscape, Naruto awoke in a cold sweat as he just survived Kaiubi's boot camp of hell and torment. He was for more knowledgeable now, but his mind would never be the same. Kaiubi had trained him in charka control, some jutsu, and mastering three of his five chakra affinities, since when being still physical, he could still manipulate his chakra the way he wanted to for if he wanted to perform a jutsu. After a year of that Kaiubi had him studying seals and everything else shinobi. It was a whole another mind year before he could move on to manipulating Kaiubi's charka. He had finally mastered it when Kaiubi had told him the last thing he wanted to hear. Kaiubi was being drained away. Naruto had converted a large amount of chakra in his training, and now Kaiubi would disappear in a year if he couldn't find a body for Kaiubi to transfer into. 
it was a good thing that in the first and second years he had discovered some interesting things about his bloodline Nadagan. Now he was face to face with a worried Jiraiya to who he told everything to. Jiraiya wanted to faint after hearing that tale, but he needed confirmation. So let me get this straight. The Kaiubi, who can be a girl who's in love with you, or a boy who's a drill sergeant, trained you for three years in your mind. But before that, you gained the Namika's bloodline Dejutsu, and the one Minato's father had wasn't even the true full power of it. Also you're the first to receive its true power because you were willing to give up your hatred for others. Jiraiya said incredulously as Naruto nodded truthfully each time. Jiraiya nodded slowly as he fell back, finally allowing himself to faint. Naruto only looked at him, then shrugged as he got his Dagon scroll and activated his eyes to read more on the powers his eyes had. Interesting Naruto said with a fox-like grin as he read the scroll. The up tomorrow's training with Jiraiya would be interesting indeed. The next day, Naruto and Jiraiya had gotten up early to train and then moved to the next town in search of Tsunade. That was why they were in Haskin town. Jiraiya said he and Naruto would be collecting some information there. The only problem was, why do I have to stay here? I'm the Yano now, so why can't I go? Naruto whined as Jiraiya sighed at his actions. I thought you said that you grew smarter. Jiraiya asked as Naruto blinked. I did, but that doesn't mean I'm still not 13, pervy sage. Besides, Kaiu-chan said she likes my childishness. Naruto said with a pout. Well, I don't care for it much. Here, study this jutsu and when I come back I'll see how far you've truly gotten with Kaiubi. If it's good enough, then I'll start teaching you a truly amazing jutsu, the Rasengan. Jiraiya said as he gave Naruto a scroll. Naruto blinked a few times as raised his hand slightly like he was holding a fruit. You mean this Naruto said his chakra swirled in his hand until it formed a perfect Rasengan. Jiraiya narrowed his eyes as he studied the jutsu. How did you learn this? Jiraiya asked in a serious voice with narrowed eyes. He knew he hadn't even mentioned it to Naruto, and the boy knew it already. Jiraiya knew he was supposed to be the only one to know that jutsu besides the boy's father, Minato. I saw it and studied it when you fainted last night. It was in a blood seal scroll from dad. He had some great tips, hints, and tricks on it too. Naruto said energetically as he formed another in the opposite hand. Jirei almost fainted again, but stopped because this time Naruto might learn the Fly Thunder God Jutsu if he did. That year of chakra exercises paid off, don't ya think? Naruto said as he dispelled both Rasengan from his hands. Yeah well, just study that Jutsu, okay? It'll be helpful in future battles Jiraiya said quickly before he vanished in a plume of smoke. Naruto sighed as he sat down and opened the scroll. Higher style. Small fire stream Jutsu, this technique is used as the parent Jutsu of almost any fire Jutsu used. It was created by Akira Siratobi and requires no hand seals Naruto started reading as he sat there in the hotel room. But the Tachi and Kisum, we're getting close. I can feel Naruto's chakra from here and it's much stronger and more controlled than the last time we saw him. Itachi said in monotone with Kisum nodded as they strolled into the outskirts of town. Yeah, you're right. It's focused to the point of great chakra control, but it still isn't at mastery yet, although it's definitely more power. I'd say he was at low Chunin in both before, but it seems that he just jumped to Sanin level in two days. It's almost as if he's been training for years oh well, that'll just make it more fun to have a battle against him. Isum said with a wide shark-like grin, showing his shark-like teeth. Itachi nodded as he too wished to test the limits of Naruto's newfound power. Then let's not make haste, Itachi said as he and Kisum took to the roofs and ran toward Naruto was located. With Kakashi, so Naruto went with Jureya sama to find Tsunade sama to help me. Kakashi said in an extremely weak voice as he lay unmoving in his bed. The only part of him he could move was his eyes and his head a bit, but that wasn't much. In the room with him were some people mainly Asuma, Gai, and Kurunai, but also Yuga Yazuki and Shikaku Nara. That's Naruto-sama, or Hokage-sama, Kakashi-senpai. You of all people should know how to show the proper respect for the Hokage. Yuga said as Kakashi seemed to simply ignore her. She wasn't sure if he hadn't heard or what, but it made her uneasy about him and his loyalties. Anyways that's everything from the meetings, and so now all of you are filled in and Kakashi, show Naruto-sama the respect he deserves. After all, he could just have you killed if he wanted Shikaku said lazily, but smirked as the little color Kakashi had faded. I'm very respectful of Naruto, but that doesn't mean we should let it go to our heads nor his. I mean, he is just a genin after all. He may be Hokage now, but he doesn't have any of the power to back up the title. I'll admit he may have a few good jutsu, but he lacks the intellect and power to be a proper Hokage. At first I was caught in all the hype that my student became Hokage, but he really can't do it. He's the weakest of my team. Now Sasuke on the other hand, he defeated Gara, the one-tailed Jinchuriki Kakashi said as he stared at the ceiling. He was oblivious to the anger and shock of the others in the room. They were the ones who really knew of the battle, mainly because Yuga was the one to witness it. 
So, Kakashi had been fed that crap the civilian council had spread around. Kakashi, do you mind if I go for a smoke? Asuma asked as he nodded to the others that they would deal with it later. They nodded back as Shikaku and Yuga left in a plume of smoke. Asuma sighed as he sat back down. Kakashi finally and painfully craned his neck over so he could look at them. I thought you were going for a smoke, and where are Shikaku and Yugao? Kakashi asked as Asuma shrugged nonchalantly. I decided against it since my friends hurt, and I think those two needed to get work done, so they left as fast as they could. Asuma said as Kakashi nodded at the lies. After talking more for a few minutes Kakashi had fallen asleep, and the others were talking amongst themselves. SHH guy said as the door opened to reveal Sasuke. Sasuke took a quick glance around the room and frowned as he walked into it. Why is Kakashi asleep and why is this room full of Jonin? Sasuke asked rather demanded as if he was entitled to the answers. Guy had to suppress his anger a bit as he answered the boy. Not much really Guy said unconvincingly as Sasuke only became enraged at the obvious lie. What are you doing? What in the world is going on here? Sasuke asked heatedly as they only avoided his gaze so they wouldn't be tempted to kill him. He was their new Hokage's friend and so they would kill him just yet. Just then the door burst open and a random special Jonin came into the room. Hey, is it true that Itachi has returned? And that he's come here to get Naruto-sama. Sasuke had completely missed the Sama part as he was stuck on the fact his brother had been in the village and not dead at his feet. The Jonin looked about and his eyes laid on Sasuke. He froze at seeing the last Ichiha Kurinai called him an idiot as Sasuke ran from the room and toward his brother. He'd kill Itachi this time and that was a promise. Chapter 5. The True Training. And so this jutsu is to become intertwined and used to prepare for any fire-style jutsu that will be used in the future. Damn that was long. Naruto said as he moved on to the next jutsu scroll. He read through a few of them and got a pretty good idea of how to do them, plus they were way shorter than that lay mass fire scroll Jiraiya had given him. Herbie Sage is probably out doing Kami knows what. Would he have to make me stay in the room, I still need help with advanced seals and formulas. Naruto said in annoyance at being treated like a child. He was Hokage now, which meant Jiraiya was now his subordinate and had to do what he said. But then again he was the student and Jiraiya was the master. Master of ditching kids to go peek on girls. Damn pervert. Naruto yelled to himself as he continued to read and work with his scrolls. He knew he couldn't act this way when he was around people or when being Hokage, but he was in the hotel room all alone and Jiraiya had told that while on the search he was the student and Jiraiya was the sensei. But Hiashi, in Konoha. So you see that is why I asked Naruto to marry you, Hinata. I believe him to be the best male for you, and so he is to be your husband when you turn 16 years old, the age of marriage besides, I don't want to give up my daughter to some pig for good clan alliances, and by marrying you to your true love, I'm being both a good father and clan head. The Ashi said to Hinata and Hanabi as they had been pestering him about it, mainly Hanabi. Thank you father, but what of Hanabi? The clan elders will marry her off as well once they see that I'm with Naruto-kun. Hinata said in worry for her younger sister. Do not worry my daughters, for I have a plan for this as well. When Hanabi reaches of age Niji will become clan head and she will marry Naruto as well. Since he has two clans to revive he'll need all the help he can get. Besides, I'm sure he will come to love both of you as I had loved your mother when we were wedded. He Ashi said as his two daughters smiled and hugged him tightly. Then Hinata's eyes widened as she remembered what she and Ino had talked about earlier. Father, Ino Yamanaka wanted to be with Naruto-kun as well. If Naruto is truly from two clans as you say, then I think she and I can find more girls who I know will love Naruto-kun as much as I do. Do you think he'd mind us doing that father? Hinata said as he actually thought about it for a moment. I'm sure Naruto wouldn't mind. He doesn't seem like that type of person, and from what he and I spoke about I think he'd trust you and Ino sans judgment on girls for potential wives. You and Hanabi better get going, there are a lot of girls I'm sure Naruto would be interested in, but only a few in the village which are right for him. Hiashi said with a chuckle as his daughters left. Ah, Naruto, you lucky bastard Hiashi said as his clone came out of hiding and began doing paperwork again while he read Jiraiya's newest book. But Jiraiya, peeking in a hot spring, the girls here are amazing. Achoo. Jiraiya said quietly with a perverted giggle and then sneezed softly for the fourth time today. Um, must be some hot young lady remembering the love of Master Jiraiya. Jiraiya shouted on accident as a bath stone crashed into his face. At that pervert. A sexy young woman yelled as she covered herself. She and the 20 other women then proceeded to beat Jiraiya crap less, as his screams were heard all over the town. But Naruto, in the hotel room, ha hey, hey, that perv just got his ass pounded worse than Rajimaru. Naruto said as he laughed from hearing the girlish scream of his sensei. There was a knock at the door, and Naruto answered it only to come face to face with Itachi and kiss him. I thought I told you to stay in the village, and why is he here? Naruto said with a frown on his face as Itachi bowed to him. 
He has very important information on Madara, Naruto-sama, so I thought it'd be best if you heard it right away. Itachi said as Naruto sighed and ushered them in. Hein, watch ah god, kiss him san. Naruto said as he sat on the bed and they pulled up chairs. Well Naruto-sama, Madara Ichiha is the main reason for your parents not being around. He caused a Kaiubi to escape and then placed it under an extremely powerful Jinjutsu to do his bidding. Your father, the Yandame Hokage, defeated him and made him retreat, thus breaking the Jinjutsu. The Kaiubi continued to attack and ended with it being sealed into you and both your parents dying to keep you safe. Kisum said as Naruto closed his eyes to hide his emotion. Does he have any other crimes to atone for? Naruto asked in monotone to further hide his emotion. Yes, Hokage-sama. In the past he took control of the fourth Mizukage with his Sharingan. I was one of the very few who knew. I was to help him to bring an end to the world of lies, but all it did was make it a much large world indeed Kisum finished sadly as Itachi picked up. He also helped train me to effectively kill the entire Ichiha clan, started the Mist Civil War, and is the true leader of Akatsuki. He's collecting the Bijuu so that he can have total control of the world by reflecting his Tsukiyomi off the moon. Itachi said as Naruto grew shocked at the information. He's a monster Naruto growled out as Itachi and Kisum nodded. Itachi's head snapped toward the door as a frown appeared on his once emotionless face. Sasuke Itachi and Naruto said as they then turned to one another. We'll talk about that later, but for now excuse me, Naruto-sama. I need to drill something into my foolish little brother's head. Itachi said as he stood and bowed to Naruto before calmly walking out of the room and shutting the door behind him. Kisum and Naruto looked at the door as they heard the sounds of birds chirping, explosions, grunts, shouts of pain, Itachi talking, more shouts of pain, and then a duck yeah that last one they had no clue what it was. Itachi came back into the room looking a little drained with a beaten and battered Sasuke over his shoulder. Sorry about that Naruto-sama, where were we? Itachi said as a knock came to the door. It was Mike Guy and he looked a bit embarrassed as he looked up in shock to see Itachi there. He saw Sasuke over Itachi's shoulder and was about to attack until he heard Naruto. I, don't. They're my agents and Sasuke kinda deserved the ass kicking from coming all the way here for something he couldn't achieve. Now take him back to the Kanoha hospital. Be sure to get Kakashi there as well. Naruto said sternly as Guy came into the room and bowed to him. Speaking of Kakashi, Naruto-sama, there is something about him that concerns a few of us. Mainly myself, Shikaku-san, Asuma, Kurunai-san and Yuga-san. He seems to believe that you will do a poor job as Hokage and are not fit for the position. He has also stated that Sasuke-san will do a better job at it because he is more talented than you. He also seems to believe it was Sasuke-san who defeated Gara-san's Bijuu, but the rest of us know it was you due to some of the Anbu who watched your battle. Guy said as Naruto looked a bit shocked. He had always thought Kakashi believed in him, if not just a little bit. Well now he knew it always was about Sasuke. Thank you for that information guy. Now can you please do as I said before and repot this to the shinobi council, I'll be back as soon as I can, but I want them to use the root anbu that Danzo selects for A rank and S rank missions. Tell them to redirect our anbu to surveillance of the village. That is all, you may be on your way guy. Naruto said as guy bowed once more and took Sasuke to the village. The great tactic, use the real anbu for a watchful eye on the village and use Danzo's route to complete hunter and information missions outside the village there for showing only half the strength of all the anbu core. Ingenious, Naruto-sama. Itachi commented as Kisum nodded because Mist used to do the same tactic after the civil war. Thank you Itachi, now what is the other reason you're here? I hardly believe that you'd waste time traveling here to tell me something that could have been said once I returned to the village. Naruto said as Itachi's eyebrow twitched for a second, showing his hidden surprised. Well, we did come here for that reason at first, but then, while at the edge of town, we noticed your increase in power, so we wanted to test it. Kisum said with a grin as Naruto smirked at him. Naruto stood up and they followed his lead. Well then, I'll show you the power of the Hokage. Naruto said as they exited the room. They quickly made their way to an empty grass plain. Itachi activated his Sharingan, and Kisum took Sharkskin off his back as Naruto raised a brow. Starting things off serious are we? Why? Naruto said as he had planned on them underestimating him and his abilities. We sensed you power increase and the control you have over it. We're not good sensor ninja, but even we can tell that if we don't take this battle seriously, it'll be our last for a while. Itachi said as Kisum nodded with a huge grin. Enough talk, time to fight. Kisum said as he rushed Naruto. Naruto flipped back as he ran through hand signs. Lightning style. Lightning dragon jutsu. A huge dragon made of lightning streaked out of his open palm, utterly decimating the spot Kisum was before he leapt high into the air. Itachi raced through hand signs at a blinding speed before inhaling deeply. Higher style. Grand Fireball Jutsu. The giant fireball 5x the size the one Sasuke could make raced at Naruto as he barely dodged out of the way. 
The flames of the edge of the fireball caught his foot as he stumbled to the ground. He held his ankle and foot as he looked at Itachi who pointed upward. Naruto cursed as he quickly bit his thumb and drew blood. He slammed his palm to the ground and a seal matrix appeared where he did. Summoning Jutsu. A large poof of smoke large Kisum's sword slammed into the shield of Gamakin the guardian toad. Gamakin pushed Kisum off his shield and high into the air as Naruto leapt up into the air after him. Gamakin then impaled Itachi with his Sasamata. Itachi merely stood stock still and then busted into Crow who flew after Naruto. Gamakin sighed as he dispelled from the battle. Where do you think you're going? Itachi said once the crows reformed into front of Naruto, who only smirked at seeing the 18-year-old Ichiha. Nowhere, because I was meant to hold you off. Naruto said as Itachi gave a raised brow. His eyes widened as he drew a kunai at Naruto, who was hit by it and dispelled into smoke, revealing him to be nothing but a clone. Itachi turned around to kiss him to see Naruto behind the shark-like man with his fist cocked back. Itachi, with the use of his Sharingan, noticed that Naruto had used Dancing Shadow Leaf to get behind Kissum, and that there was Wind Chakra infused within the punch that was about to be delivered. Kissum, watch out. Behind you. Itachi said as he flashed through hand signs. Kissum turned around, but it was too late as Naruto fist impacted with Kissum's gut. Wind style. Tornado fist. Naruto said as he twisted his fist into Kissum's gut and sent the man swirling toward the ground. Kissum flipped over when he was close to the ground and landed softly in a low crouch as he had went through ten hand signs. Naruto's eyes widened as he could tell what was about to happen. Water style. Great water bullet jutsu. Kissum then fired a large blast of water at Naruto, who was still high in the air as he looked down at the two with wide eyes. Seeing the large water jutsu heading towards him, Naruto did a single one-handed hand seal and brought his index and middle fingers to his lips while taking a deep breath. Fire style. Fire stream jutsu. Naruto called out as he channeled more and more chakra into the jutsu so it would overpower Kisum's water one. He saw that it wasn't working, so he used a bit of Kyubi's chakra and the flames of the jutsu turned white and red as he increased its power. Fire style. Dragon's rage jutsu. Naruto's new jutsu completely bested Kisum's own as it dissolved the chakra-infused water and sped to the two Akatsuki members. Although as soon as it did this, Itachi disappeared and reappeared above Naruto and brought a harsh kick down on top of his head, slamming him down into the ground. But when Itachi hit him, he quickly realized that the Naruto he hit wasn't the real Naruto, as when he hit him, Naruto turned into a wooden person. Revealing that Naruto had replaced himself with a wood clone. But how? Itachi questioned as he started to look around for the real Naruto, although before he could find him, he suddenly found thousands of water needles surrounding him, where he heard Naruto's voice cry out the name of the technique. Secret Ice Style Jutsu. A Thousand Needles of Death. Upon which the thousands of ice needles surrounded him, all closed him on around him and impaled him, but as soon as they did, Itachi reverted into crows. Revealing that he himself was a crow clone. When Itachi reappeared beside, he suddenly turned around to find Naruto behind them with his hands in a clapped position. Isum turned back and they were both frozen to the spot as they saw Naruto form the one seal they only knew of one cage ever doing. Water Style. Water Shockwave. After which water came from the air and formed a vortex around Naruto that overflowed from his position in the form of a crescent wave. Luckily though, for Kisum and Itachi, they were able to jump up into the air in time and avoid being drowned by the waves. Earth style. Mud wall Itachi said as he spat up mud that formed a giant wall that he and Kisum rested upon. Itachi watched Naruto silently with his Sharingan spinning wildly as he gave the youth a small smile. Kisum, we must stop now. You know that only the Nidane could use that jutsu, and there is no telling how many more powerful jutsu he's learned since we've never truly fought him before. He was even able to use all five elements in powerful jutsu and increase their power with his own chakra and kaiubi. He has also shown jutsu which only the Shadai and Nidane Hokage have ever been able to use, but they're not exactly to those levels yet. But, I'm certain if we continue like this it'll come down to my Sharingan and your sword, which it shouldn't in a spar. Itachi said as he tried to memorize the jutsu with his Sharingan, but he noticed that he couldn't. He wondered why. Yeah, he's really a powerhouse, Itachi. He kept up with us at half power, and he may not be using all his power either. It's like fighting one of the Sanin, cause you never know how he'll change the tide of this fight. Kisum said as he ran through hand signs and made the water back into vapor. Itachi dispelled his mud wall as they walked up to a panting and sweating Naruto. You guys win. I'm beat, those were all the jutsu I knew, and I don't want to use my bloodline on you too. I want to test that on someone else. But don't worry, once Jureya Sensei really starts my training and I get the other jutsu I have in the scrolls, I'll be able to keep up with you too. So, how'd I do? Naruto said as he fell to the ground and sat there. Itachi smiled at him while Kisum gaped like a fish. What? You mean we were about to give up, but he's not even in his training yet. Worst of all, he's 13. 
that means he's stronger than you were at that age Itachi. We fought him at half power, and he's saying Jurei Asama hasn't even started his training yet. I can't wait until you're done with it. Isam shouted in disbelief, but it quickly turned to excitement for the challenge of a powerful Naruto to battle with and against. Itachi only nodded his head as he too felt that surprise and excitement. He didn't like fighting for life or death, but sparring every now and then was relaxing and fun. Well then, I believe this will help you along the way. Itachi said as he reached into his robe and pulled out a small scroll. It read Jinjutsu on it, and he handed it to Naruto. Thanks Itachi, it means a lot. Naruto said as he smiled up at Itachi. Kisum looked in thought and snapped his fingers as he pulled out and scroll and unrolled it. I was saving this in case I ever had an apprentice, but I'm sure you'll do me proud by wielding it instead, Hokage-sama. Kisum said as he placed his hand over the seal inside the scroll. A poof of smoke later revealed a regular katana, with a simple cross guard, which is a simple open frame, much like a four-pane window. It has a white-colored hilt and white sheath. I was took this off a grass anbu I killed once. I was never able to use it properly, but I feel as though you would. The ninja said it was called Sambanzakura and that it had a mysterious power that let it rival our blades of the Seven Swordsmen of the Hidden Mist. That was all he told me before he died, but I'm sure you learn along the way, Hokage-sama. Kisum said as he handed the katana to Naruto who was shocked. Thank Kisum, I use it and Itachi's jutsu with reserve and pride. Naruto said with a small bow of respect for the two. We must leave now, Hokage-sama. Pain is calling for all Akatsuki members, but we'll return as soon as we can. Come, Kisum. Itachi said in monotone as he and Kisum disappeared into blurs. Naruto simply shrugged and went back to the hotel room. He studied and tested more jutsu before going to sleep. When Jureya got there he saw that Naruto was already asleep, so he simply shrugged and went to sleep as well. He'd start Naruto true training tomorrow. A week later, a lake outside of Tanzaku town. Naruto grunted as he was kicked in the torso and sent flying backwards. He flipped himself midair and landed on his feet while skidding across the water. In burst of speed Naruto shot off towards Jiraiya, one hand going to his kunai shuriken pouch, and the other began a series of one-handed seals. He threw several shuriken at Jiraiya before thrusting out his palm. Wind style. Southern Gust Jutsu. The shuriken, which had already been going forward at high speed, soon became a nothing more than streaks of silver as they head for Jiraiya. The toad sand and jumped out of the way, however Naruto knew his sensei would. Naruto put in a small intense burst of highly concentrated chakra into his legs as he disappeared and reappeared right in front of Jiraiya. Shinobi Rule 7. Never let your guard down, A, eh, pervy sage. Naruto said cheekily with a smirk as Jiraiya's eyes widened a bit. Naruto aimed a punch at his sensei's stomach, which Jiraiya swatted away in the hopes of knocking Naruto off balance. Naruto went down and pushed himself into a handstand, launching a kick that managed to hit Jiraiya in the face and made the man stumble back. Pushing himself into a flip Naruto went for an axe kick to Jiraiya's shoulder. Jiraiya put up both arms to guard and immediately regretted it as he was forced to a knee by the power behind the kick. Bam brat and his stupid chakra enhanced strength. He's almost like a mini tsunade, but he's still a long ways to go in terms of chakra control and precision. Jiraiya thought as he grabbed Naruto's leg with both hands and was about to flip the boy over, but Naruto had other plans. Naruto used his other leg to jump up and over Jiraiya, using the man's grip to keep himself balanced, and launched a kick to the pervy sage's face. Jiraiya was forced to let go of Naruto's leg as he moved his head to the side and dodged the kick. He turned around and managed to kick Naruto in the chest on the his way down. Naruto choked out Salvia from the force of the kick, but grinned as he moved with a blow and began going into a series of backflips to gain some distance from the toad sage. Jiraiya took out a kunai and threw it at Naruto, going through a few hand seals. Ninja Art. Kunai Shadow Clone Jutsu. One kunai multiplied into 30 as they all headed straight for Naruto. Naruto just looked at them with the same grin as he began going through a few of his own hand signs before calling out his newest jutsu. Water Style. Water Wall. A large wall of water formed around Naruto blocking the kunai, and once Naruto was sure the last of them hit his shield, he went through more hand signs and called out the name of another jutsu had learned earlier that day. Water Style. Water Dragon Jutsu. The wall of water began to swirl around Naruto at high speed before taking the shape of an enormous water dragon with glowing yellow eyes. As soon as it did Naruto created a shadow clone. The clone clapped its hands together as the water dragon launched itself towards Jiraiya. Wind style. Gale Palm. The clone opened its hand toward Jiraiya as the man's eyes widened a bit while wind shot a large blast of compressed wind out of its hands. Instead of Jiraiya it went straight for the water dragon. That was when Jiraiya's eyes went really wide. The water dragon's power and speed were soon increased as the wind juts emerged with it. It headed towards Jiraiya, with the sand and cursing up a storm as he jumped out of the way and into the air, having to use chakra and his full leg strength. 
The water dragon's head slammed into the water with a loud crash, water erupted everywhere looking as if there was a large explosion. Using the distraction caused by his jutsu Naruto drew a few shuriken and went through the hand signs Jiraiya had used earlier. Ninja art. Shuriken shadow clone jutsu. A few shuriken became 30 as they headed for the still airborne Jiraiya. Noticing them the toad sage went through his own hand seals to counter them. Ninja art. Needle Jizo. Jiraiya's hair wrapped around his body and became hard as steel as it deflected the shuriken. Once the shuriken were all gone Jiraiya whipped his still long hair around and called out another jutsu. Ninja art. Hell needles. Several hardened needles of hair launched at Naruto from Jiraiya's mane. Naruto took out two three-prong kunai, spinning them by the rings he went into his tojutsu stance, the toad style, with both kunai held in a cross guard. Naruto and his clone's hands became blurs of motion as they deflected the senbin-like hairs away from the real Naruto. When the senbin hailstorm died down Naruto looked around not seeing Jiraiya anywhere. He frowned before closing his eyes trying to sense out the man's chakra. Naruto could pick it up fairly easily, since it was the most powerful one there besides his own. He finally found the town madman, however his eyes widened when he realized the man was right under him. His realization came too late as Jiraiya came out of the water and smashed a fist right into Naruto's chin, but before Naruto could fly too far Jiraiya's hair wrapped around his body and hardened, immobilizing him. It was then Jiraiya felt cold metal on his neck and found the clone he'd forgotten about with a kunai to it. Jiraiya and the real Naruto had a silence and long stare down before they bursted into laughter as the eldest Sanin placed the youngest cage down on the ground upright. Naruto went through several hand signs as he slowed his breathing to get his jutsu just right this time. Unlike the other days he had used it. Water style. Water drainage jutsu. All the water from the supposed lake was turned into air once again as Jiraiya slammed his hand to the ground. Earth style. Leveling the plain field jutsu. The ground under their feet rose to the level of the surrounding area, and Naruto did a single hand sign. Secret wood style jutsu. Great forest creation. The barren land they were standing on began to blossom and sprout new life until it matched the very forest that surrounded it. Naruto slumped onto the ground as he rubbed the back of his neck. These pervy sage, I know doing these are supposed to help, but don't cha think I could rest today. I mean, we'll find her here right. Naruto said as he started to feel the drain of the higher rank jutsu he had been using. Jiraiya shook his head with a grin as he looked down on his apprentice. No can do, Naruto. You may be san in class in all areas, but you need battle experience with your jutsu and tojutsu. Next spar will mix in jinjutsu, kinjutsu and the techniques of the shodai hokage, alright. Now dispel the clones from the hotel room and see what they've accomplished in the last five hours. Jiraiya said as Naruto groaned but did as his sensei instructed. His head reeled a bit at the sudden mass of information, and he shook his head to clear it. They've finally completed all the seals training from the seals scroll, and they've started on your personal seals scrolls. They mastered the element training for earth and wood style that we started three days ago, so all that's left for me to complete is fire and lightning, since I did wind and water five days ago. The other clones have finished reading through the scrolls of the Nidaim and Shadai, so I'll be ready by tomorrow to see how those techniques work. Naruto said as Jiraiya nodded while looking deep in thought. Alright, then we'll start your training in medical ninjutsu today, and we'll have you start on your writings as well. Tomorrow we'll start on combining the elements you've learned now and go from there. Naruto, I realize that we've pushed your training to the max, but it's for your own good. The other Hokage specialized in only a few fields, and Minato had only learned a bit of each field, never truly diving into them, but learning the bare basics of each. You have a golden opportunity. You can dive head first into them all at once, due to your large amount of chakra, picture perfect memorization, and your shadow clone jutsu. You've learned more in two weeks than other cages have learned into in years. Jiraiya said as Naruto smiled up at him. I know sensei, so what do we start now? Naruto asked as he and Jiraiya sat down. Well for starters, we'll begin with 20 clones, reading the medical ninjutsu scrolls Tsunade left in the Hokage's vault. Once they've mastered the basics we'll create 20 more and so on and so forth until they're done. I'll train 50 clones in advance seals, and you'll do your writings personal, but for now why don't you take a break and go into town, you've earned it. Jiraiya said as Naruto got up and hugged him. Thanks pervy sage, I promise I'll master 100 jutsu tomorrow. Naruto said as Jiraiya chuckled while he got up himself. Sure whatever brat, just be sure to create those clones. Jiraiya said as Naruto nodded and created 70 clones. Now remember Naruto, you may not know anyone here, but word might have spread that you and I are traveling together. That can give you unwanted attention so in your true form instead of that transformational right. Jiraiya said as Naruto sighed deeply and formed a hand sign. Yes, sensei. Kai. Naruto said as he was shrouded by smoke. When the smoke cleared the old Naruto was gone. In his place was a young man as tall as Rock Lee or Niji. 
He had long spiky blonde and two bangs framing either side of his face. The reason for this is because he doesn't wear his headband anymore, and Kai Ubi accelerated his growth spurt when training in his mind for three mental years. Also, the kid never heard of a haircut until after his three-year trip with Ureya, so there you have it folks. He possessed cerulean blue eyes that shined like a precious stone, but beneath that warmth and shine was cold and dark, to which proved he was a shinobi. He wore a long black robe shirt, black robe pants, and a white sash to hold them together, to which he tied in a loose knot in the front. Zenbanzakura was in its sheath held in place on his right hip by the sash. He liked to call his little wardrobe a shihakusho because well he just though it sounded cool okay. He wore a long white haori with long sleeves over that. He also wore a white scarf around his neck to use as a makeshift mask. Dust image Naruto is a really cool and really ungirly Baikui with spiky blonde hair and blue eyes. That bad part about the scarf was that it was last second and the only one they could find cost a fortune and then some. In fact Kanoha should be getting the bill for that right about now, he did charge it to the village after all since it concerned the village but the council and so that ends the briefing of events, so now on to the village finances. Hamura said as the entire village council had been gathered for the first time since Naruto became Hokage, yet the civilian half of the council didn't know that. Hamura and the others of the shinobi half of the council were very happy at the moment. Naruto's blood clone had Shadow's clones working in the sealed office, and the village was working better than it had when the Yandane was still alive in Hokage. The civilian council tried for grabs at power, but they were shut down when the Anbu commandeer told them he would kill them himself if they tried usurping power from the Hokage title. The council had many arguments about that, but Danzo had enough of the headaches from Sayori Hirono and said he'd do it now if they didn't stop. Amura, Kaharu, Danzo, Shikaku and Dragon the Anbu Commandeer were the only ones permitted to enter the Hokage office to do work when in actuality, they were merely advising Naruto or reporting to him. All B-ranked or higher missions were given from Naruto, while the lower-ranked missions were given from Aruka and Shikaku. Everything else was handled by the Shinobi Council until a proper Hokage was appointed to lead in these dire times of instability, as put by Danzo and Shikaku. Amura sipped his morning coffee as he was handed the village financial report of the week. Alright, let's have a look here we have 25 new ninja sign-ups to the roost, so that's $250 to us, we issued the help of Wave, and they're still repairing our village, so that'll be $200,000 each week they're here, we have more blacksmiths, metals and other materials from Wave as well oh, look at what we have here. It seems that someone bought a cute little scarf on their search for Tsunade, and it only cost what th hell. Hamura read, then shouted out as spit out his coffee when he came across a scarf which was the purchase of Naruto. How could one little scarf for a 13-year-old Hokage cost so much? What is it? Holy crap. Look at all those zeros. Can the village even afford that? Kaharu asked as she looked over the paper as well. They passed it down the shinobi side of the council with each of them having a comment about the outrageous price. Hot damn. Dragon said as he passed it to Shikaku. Troublesome what the fuck. Shikaku mumbled before he took a good look at the paper while passing it to Hiashi. Impossible. Even the Hyuga clan can't see that price on any scarf. Hiashi said while passing the paper to Choza and Inoichi. Wow and I thought my clan's food bill was high Choza said. How can this be? Inoichi asked quietly as he passed it to Asuma. I need to quit smoking to help pay for this don't I? Asuma asked as the two elders nodded while he passed the paper to Tsuma and Yuzuka, who looked over it with Shibi Aburam. Holy shit. We're just going to kill the person who created that scarf right? I mean, we can't pay this. Tsum said as the elders shook their heads. Shibi stayed quiet as he fell back, fainted. We can't. Don't you see the signature of the artisan who created the scarf? It was made by the master weaver, Suharuto Kurum III. The scarf is made from the silver white windflower light silk and should be handed down from generation to generation as a family heirloom. The scarf alone is worth enough to buy 10 mansions anywhere in the world and then some. If we kill that man then there will be hell to pay from his loyal and extremely rich clients. Danzo said as he looked at the paper and handed it back to Hamura. Hey, how come we didn't get to see the paper? Sayori Hurano screeched as the others recoiled from her voice. Because that paper directly concerns the shinobi half of the village unless you civilians want to pay for it with your funds and paychecks. Hiashi said as Danzo gave the civilians a stone stare. They quickly shook their heads and moved on to other business, but Sayori had a question that bugged her, and she, like the civilian fool she was in a ninja world, voiced her thoughts. Why is it only you five are permitted to enter the Hokage office? We're just as important as you so why can't we? There is no Hokage so we should be able to take the office as a command station for the village or give it to Ichihasama so he can become the next Hokage. Sayori said as the shinobi scoffed at her. The Ashi decided to answer her ridiculous questions so they could move on to more important things. 1. They are the village elders, the Jonin Commandeer, Shikaku, and the Anbu Commandeer, Dragon. 
they have the purview to be in that office, and no one else except clan heads of ninja clans can do the same. 2. You're a fool to believe that they would be in that office unattended, he's talking about Naruto's clone, 3. It is the command station of the Hokage and no one else. 4. The Ichiha, as I've been told by my clansmen, is a spoiled brat who broods all day or lusts after power and would never make it to Jonin, let alone Hokage, so long as we clans have a say in that. Hiashi said with a glare as the civilians shrunk back, but Sayori was unfazed by it. Look wide eye, I don't know who you think you should be quiet Haruno-san is insulting a clan head is offense punishable by that clan head, and I'm sure Hayuga-sama would gladly chose dead for you. Shibi said as Hiashi smirked. You were saying, Haruno-san. Hiashi said as Sayuri paled and stayed quiet. But Naruto, he walked through the streets of Tenzaku town. He was sure that his council was far too shocked right now to be pissed at him, so he'd think of a good story to tell them before he returned. He had received many memories from the clones in his office, but they seemed to have everything under control, so he just let them go with the flow. Naruto looked up and realized three things. 1. He was at the outside wall of Tenzaku Town's castle, which was in the center of the city. 2. The castle wasn't there anymore. And 3. Now that he had sensing abilities from his mental training with Kaiubi, he could easily identify Orochimaru's chakra. It was like a thick smoke the way his evil and dark chakra was permeable in the air. He sensed three others, but he couldn't identify them, although one felt familiar as if he had been around it before. He decided to check it out. The last time Orochimaru was around Sasuke ended up with his snake emo mark that only made him far more of an emo avenger. He quickly took to the shadows of the castle as he suppressed his chakra to the lowest he could. He peeked out from shadows over the mysterious chakras that he sensed earlier and found four people standing on the street just below. They were Orochimaru, Tsunade, and two others. The first surprised him because it was Kabuto, but then he remembered Kabuto's fishy attitude at the Chunin exam. I guess that explains it. It also explains why he showed so much interest in Sasuke and me. Naruto thought as he set his gaze on the other unknown. The only reason he knew Tsunade was the blonde one was because her chakra levels were equal if not stronger than that of Orochimaru. It seemed she was flexing her chakra, probably to show Orochimaru she was still as powerful as she in her youth. He knew that form she took was a Jinjutsu because Jiraiya told him on the way to town. Hmm, so that must be the assistant Shizun that Pervy Sage was talking about. She really does have a great pair of pure thoughts, pure thoughts. The world doesn't need another pervert. Naruto thought as he looked at Shizun and shook his head of his thoughts quickly. It's been quite a long time, hasn't it Orochimaru? Tsunade said in a somewhat civil tone. Orochimaru chuckled as he looked at his former teammate. Naruto sighed at him getting there at the beginning. Yes it has. I've actually come to ask you for a favor. My arms would you cure them for me? He asked as he lifted his useless arms to show her the bandages on them. Naruto gazed at the bandaged arms in deep thought, but kept his ears open to their talk, since his senses were increased by Kaiubi's training. He wondered what the old man had done to the snake. All he knew was that the old man really fucked Orochimaru up, but with what kind of jutsu? It must have been the old man's undoing. What kind of mess have you gotten yourself into now, Orochimaru? Tsunade asked as she narrowed her vision on his arms. Nothing to big just out killing the third Hokage and fourth Kazuki Jirachimaru commented nonchalantly with a shrug as the two medics eyes widened, but Tsunade soon narrowed again. So, you killed Saratobi sensei and all it cost you was your arms. I would have thought, even in his decrepit old age, he'd have detached your head from those shoulders of yours ages ago. Tsunade said nonchalantly with a slight shrug as Orochimaru's face flashed anger, but was quickly replaced with his mask of kindness and friendship. So, will you do it? Kabuto asked as he could tell she was trying to change the subject while analyzing them. Tsunade shrugged again as Shizu narrowed her eyes to them. Naruto almost couldn't suppress the urge to kill Orochimaru, but he knew even Shizu and Kabuto could beat him as of now, even with his training. He just needed some more sparring experience with Yureya before he could take on Kabuto. Then he could use that power, and the first step in his plan could begin. Let's go Kabuto Orochimaru said with a dark chuckle as he and Kabuto left in a blur. Damn it, he missed most of their conversation when he was thinking of his plan. Oh well, he knew enough to tell Jiraiya. Lady Tsunade Shizun said as she came to the aid of her sensei. Let's just go get a drink Shizun Tsunade said as they walked off. Naruto jumped down from his position in the castle shadows and watched them go. When he was sure they were gone he blurred from vision, intent on telling Jiraiya everything he knew so they could make a plan. A.N. Yeah, I know, I'm speeding things up to be done with this arc and on to the next one. Which will be the cage's mission arc. Remember that. But Hinata, she, Ino, and her younger sister Hanabi could only find one other girl in the village Hinata's age that they knew could love Naruto the way Hinata did. So they were right in front of her right now. So let me get this straight, Naruto is from two clans and needs girls who will love him for him so he can revive them. Tenten said as they were seated on a bench outside the dango stand. 
Hinata, Hinabi and Ino nodded as Tenten looked and thought over it. On one side, she'd have to give up her independent woman life and marry a guy with at least three other girls. On the other side, she'd gain the love of someone she knew wouldn't stand for anything less than the best for her and the other girls. After all Naruto did beat the crap out of Niji just over what her teammate had said about Hinata, and the extra ass kicking was a taste of what he did to Hinata. Okay, wait. What about Niji and what about that Ichiha kid reviving his clan? Tenten asked as Hinata looked and thought, and Ino scoffed. Please, let me tell you, Sasuke Chiha is not going to revive his clan. He's got both a superiority and inferiority complex. He'd never acknowledge when someone is stronger than him, but the guy obsesses when he thinks someone is stronger than him. Also, for his entire life, despite being popular with girls, Sasuke has shown absolutely no interest in any of us, all due to his all-consuming desire for revenge and power. I know what he wants to do. He wants to kill his brother, because his brother went psychotic and murdered his entire clan. He should thank Kami-sama that the crazy decided to spare him. Trust me, the guy's gonna die before he even hears what sex is. As for your Niji, give up on him. He seems like the type that if he was interested he'd have shown it to you in all his previous arrogance. Ino said brashly, but nonetheless they knew she was right. It was then Hanabi had a question. But sex? Hanabi asked as the other three girls had their own reactions to the question. Hanada's face went red, and she fainted as she thought of her and her Naruto-kun doing those types of activities. Tenten blushed and started stuttering out nonsense to which no one understood. Ino though grinned as she wrapped an arm around Hanabi's shoulder and guided the younger girl down the street as they walked. She always loved giving these kinds of talks to the younger female population. Do I have a talk for you? I'm gonna tell you all about the wonders of being a woman in Kinoichi, but first let's go find that other girl your age. Her name was Mogi I think Ino said as they walked down the street. Hanabi didn't understand, but she felt nervous about what she and Mogi were about to hear. Maybe it was just excitement maybe, but Naruto and Jiraiya, later on in their hotel room, Naruto was back in his sealed form as he liked to call it. He ha just finished telling Jiraiya everything he knew about earlier, and Jiraiya looked very serious. Alright Naruto, thanks for telling me that. Now I know to stay on guard around Tsunade. Jiraiya said with a frown as Naruto looked up at him curiously. What do you mean, pervy sage? Naruto asked as he couldn't think of a reason to be on guard around her. Arachimaru most likely came with an offer she'd be hard pressed to refuse. If so, and if we encounter her like we must, she'll try any trick to keep me out of the game. Knowing Orochimaru like I do he probably promised to bring Dan and Miwaki back to life, with the use of that jutsu the Nidane created. I'm just not sure what she'll do in the end, but I'll be on guard at all times. Ureya said as Naruto started going through scrolls. Naruto eventually found a scroll which had the kanji for second on it. He started reading through them until he got to one of the only ones he hadn't practiced yet. Jutsu name summoning jutsu. Reanimation. Rank. S rank class. Supplementary. This jutsu is used to revive the dead to serve in battle as the jutsu caster sees fit. To perform this technique, the user must first acquire some of the DNA of the person they intend to revive. Side note this basically amounts to grave robbing, although blood stains or organs salvaged after the target's death also work. The soul of the intended revive must also reside in the pure world, those whose soul has been consumed by the death god, for example, cannot be resurrected. Next, a living sacrifice is required for the soul of the resurrected to use as a vessel. Once all prerequisites for the technique have been met, the physical remains acquired are smeared on a special scroll, and once the scroll is activated, the remains spread out in the form of a special symbol, with the living sacrifice in the center of the symbol. Then dust and ash encases the sacrifice's body, giving them the same appearance that the revived had at the time of their death. The chosen person is then revived, and the end product is usually stored in a casket until summoned by the user. Side note the user can theoretically revive a limitless number of people in this way, so long as they have enough sacrifices, chakra and DNA to perform the technique. Although it goes against morals to do this to the dead. It is needed to show the strength of Konoha. To those who have been brought back by this technique, may you find peace in your return to Kami's places. Hand seals. Tiger, snake, dog, dragon, clap hands. A sequence of hand seals for cancelling the technique are dog, horse, tiger and saying kai, or release. Side notes countering measures, 1. The revived individual is affected in some emotional way that gives them closure. 2. Sealing away the souls. 3. Lightning chakra to disrupt the earth chakra used to summon. Although this only works in immobilizing the revived and not a full countermeasure. It was this Naruto and Jiraiya read as more insight to the technique. Jiraiya knew Naruto had gotten this scroll and many of the other scrolls from the Hokage's vault in Naruto's office. The personal ones of Minato and Kashina were in the blood vault behind Minato's picture in the Hokage office. They had gotten a few others from the Shinobi library before going to the main gate back when they were in the village. 
So that's the thing he used to bring back the shot I and Nidame, Naruto said as he frowned deeply at the technique. It left so much to be desired, yeah, and Saratobi sensei used Minato's Reaper Death Seal Jutsu to seal Orochimaru's arms from what I read in the report the Anbu gave you. It seems that all four of the previous Hokage are unreachable now, Jiraiya said as he gazed at Naruto through the corner of his eye. Naruto had a feral grin on his face as he continued to look through the technique. Maybe not just maybe Naruto said quietly with a smirk in his voice as Jiraiya face palmed himself. Great, he gave the brat an idea, and knowing the kid he'd run with it until it was complete or he died trying. So anyway, Orochimaru would claim to have that power, but as you've read it forces the revive to obey the user. Knowing him, he'd have Tsunade heal his arms and then kill her with them, and then be at full power to destroy Konoha, except this time around the only ones to stop him would be me and Kakashi together, and even then he'll have reinforcements at his beck and call. Ureya said as he rubbed his temples from all the problems and situations that were running through his mind just thinking about it. And this is exactly why I didn't want to go hunting him down. The only person that would have a true chance of taking him down at the moment are the other two Sanin, you and Tsunade. Plus from what I read on the battle reports he has his own hidden village at his command, so waging war against him now would be stupid. Naruto said as he sat on the floor of their hotel room. Don't forget Orochimaru isn't stupid. He knows that if he attacked us now, he'd be put down hard. He learned that the village is still as strong as it was when he left, and he knows that almost all of his forces were killed along with the Sans Ninja, though they had far less dead the point is that he won't attack us for a while. Hell, from what I know of that sealing Jutsu Sensei did it can't be healed by anything. Unless he perfected that Jutsu Jiraiya said in a serious tone without any worry in his voice, yet muttered the last part to himself. Naruto heard him anyway, but decided to leave it alone for now. Okay, so what do we do now, pervy sage? Naruto asked as Jiraiya shrugged. You said Tsunade was heading for a drink, right? Well then I know just where to find her. Jirei replied as Naruto nodded, created clones, and started studying the Hokage scrolls more so than before. The and Jirei both knew that this won't be over without a fight. They just hoped they'd be the ones to come out on top, but Sasuke, in his mind, Sasuke was mad, depressed, and a bit happy all at once. He was mad because no matter what he did he felt that Naruto was passing him by. He was depressed because his brother Itachi had made him relive that night just as he did before. Alatho he was still happy, happy to be away from fangirls and Sakura. He wasn't mad at her or anything, but the girl was depressed to cheer him up for some reason. He didn't need cheering up, he needed his friends to just be that, his friends. If Naruto was around he'd understand that but yet, Naruto wasn't around. Ever since that day when Asuma showed up with Kakashi, he hadn't seen Naruto at all really. Yes, he tried to follow Naruto, but that ended with Hiyashi taking Naruto inside. He was so angry right now that his friends weren't there for what he needed, a person to tell him that he wasn't alone. Naruto had done that, Sakura at least tried, but what he really wanted was someone who would believe in him no matter what and for just that. That why, deep in a part of him that no one knew existed, he was jealous of Naruto. Naruto had everything he wanted. Haruka, the old guy at the Raymond shop, and those three kids, they all bellivabbed in him simply because he was determined and a hard worker. He had all that, but people only believed in him because of his name, so the civilians thought he was supposed to be naturally strong. They praised him like he was a god or something, but all he wanted was someone to believe in him, simply because he'd fight for what he believed in. He wanted people like the third Hokage had been for him. He wanted people he could love like family. Maybe maybe someday he'd get that. Chapter 6. Tavern Hazard. So, she's in there? Naruto asked as they had came out into town at night and walked to the best tavern in town. Jiraiya nodded as he walked in, but soon saw that Naruto wasn't following. He came back out and found Naruto just standing there squinting his eyes at the bright flashing sign, as if having a staring contest with it. Uh, kid, are you coming in or what? Jiraiya asked as Naruto turned to look to him while still in sealed form, more like runt form to me. Jiraiya mused in his mind as Naruto was giving him the look. I'm underaged. I can't go in there. Naruto exclaimed as Jiraiya sighed at the loudness of the boy's voice. Look you're a ninja so, old enough to kill means you're old enough to drink, have sex, and gamble. Right. Jiraiya said with charisma as he wrapped an arm around Naruto's shoulders, so Naruto wouldn't try to turn back as he pulled the boy into the bar. Naruto grumbled under his breath, like a child, but allowed himself to be brought in all the same. He was curious to why people would even go to taverns, but he'd never voice his curiosity. He and Jiraiya looked around for Tsunade and found her immediately. There she is, but we're not gonna go over there just yet. We'll do so after about 10 minutes, that way she can get even drunker and we have a better chance. Jiraiya said as Naruto looked at him with a raised brow. Okay Naruto said slowly as they got a table near Tsunade and Shizune so they could listen in on them. Lady Tsunade Shizune said quietly after about 10 more minutes of watching her master drink herself under. It was then Jiraiya sent Naruto a look as he turned around to face Tsunade and Shizune. Tsunade. 
Jiraiya exclaimed as Shizun jumped a bit and Tsunade looked over at him. Jiraiya. Tsunade said with a drunken hiccup as she squinted to see him properly from her blurring vision. Finally we've been looking for you all over the place. Jiraiya said in an exasperated voice that Naruto knew wasn't faked much. They had been looking through every tavern until that one where he and Jiraiya had sensed her. They grabbed their plates and moved into the empty side of the booth while Tsunade was too drunk to argue. Naruto could feel her subtly using her chakra to burn away the liquor in her body. He was sure Jiraiya could sense it too because the toad man's eyes narrowed when she had started to. That meant the plan was out the window then. So what are you here for, Jiraiya? I'm sure Orochimaru would be delighted to have a reunion since he's here too. Tsunade said as she stopped her prohibition jutsu. She knew if she used any more chakra then she was sure even Jiraiya would sense it. So, she wasn't able to burn away any more than half the alcohol in her body, but even still that was more than enough to keep her happily drunk. I figured as much listen Tsunade, we need you to come back to the Konoha in order to heal a few people from mental trauma placed on them by a Jinjutsu. So, what do you say? Jiraiya asked with a cheesy smile as he and Tsunade began playing cards like they usually did when they came across each other. Humph, I decline. Tsunade said curtly as Jiraiya sighed. Well, at least they weren't trying to make her into Hokage. Now that would have been an ordeal. Look Tsunade, it's Kaka Jiraiya started, but Tsunade interrupted when she cut her eyes to Naruto who was staring at her intently. Shizu narrowed her eyes at him. He was hiding his power well, but she and her lady could sense it. Who's the brat you got with you? Tsunade asked as Naruto grew annoyed with the woman already. Hey, who do you think you're talking about? You ancient old prune. Naruto snapped back to her, standing up just as Jiraiya grew a smirk and sat him back down. This is Naruto Uzumaki Jiraiya said as he deliberately spaced the name out for dramatic effect. It worked as Tsunade and Shizun's eyes widened as they gazed at Naruto who wore an annoyed expression. Shizun was shocked because of the Kaiubi, but Tsunade was shocked on a full other level, as she knew just about all the boy's family, mainly because it was intertwined with her own on both sides of her family. So this is the famous brat I've heard so much about in the last week. So you took down a prodigy of the Hayuga, huh? Well it seems those tales were exaggerated. This apprentice isn't at all like your last one, Jiraiya. Just look at him. He's a fool, with a big mouth, and he's funny looking too. Tsunade said as she smirked when she saw him get annoyed even more by her. Oh, yeah? Naruto snapped back at her as he finished his food. Getting angry wouldn't help their situation. They needed her to come back to the village. Well I'll have to disagree with you there, Tsunade. He's already got the makings of Hokage. He only needs more training, and that can be done before we get back to the village. Jiraiya said as Tsunade eyed Naruto even more after that clearly cryptic statement. What were they there to make her Hokage before this brat because he wasn't strong enough? So you want him to be a fool like the others, huh? Risking his life to protect the village. That's so foolish, just like Siratobi sensei He should have known better. What did he expect, trying to be a hero at his age? Tsunade said as Jiraiya frowned at her with a stone face, and Naruto clenched his fists under the table. He needed to keep his cool. Think calming thoughts. I'm a fool so foolish those sound like great lines to use in battle or life, Naruto thought as he calmed down a bit. Playing at Hokage count me out it's a fool's game, Tsunade said nonchalantly as the other two adults watched her closely. That was when all his calm and cool got its ass kicked out the window when he flew up to stand at the top of the table. Calm and cool my ass. She just insult my idols, my family, and me, all at once. Naruto thought as he rushed her, but Jiraiya calmly reached out and grabbed Naruto before he got to her. Though she'd never admit it, Tsunade was actually a bit afraid of what he might have done had Jiraiya not. The boy was leaking only a bit of killer intent, but it was concentrated, pure, and full of anger. What would happen had he mixed hate and made it stronger? She was a bit unnerved to find out. Let go of me. Naruto said as he tried to wiggle free of Jiraiya's grip. Stop calm down people are looking you're making a scene Jiraiya said, as if rehearsed while he rolled his eyes. He was more worried about his cards than the fact Naruto was causing a scene. Naruto could probably fight Tsunade, but that was going to be a short fight once she decked the brat once. Let me go. I'm not gonna just sit here while she makes a joke out of the old man and the others. No way. I don't care if she is a lady. I'll wipe that cynical sneer off her fake face. Naruto said as Tsunade narrowed her eyes at him. She could practically feel the chakra building inside of him. Tsunade hopped out of her seat and got eye level with Naruto as they glared at each other. Are you challenging me, Brad? You've got balls if nothing else. Let's take this outside then. Tsunade said as Shizun groaned and protested against it. Naruto only growled at her. She was going down hard. Tsunade, you may want to rethink that. He's not your average brat. He's the Jiraiya started but was cut off again by Tsunade. She never listened to any of his good advice. Quiet Jiraiya. I'll show this brat why I'm one of the Sanin. She said as she and Naruto walked outside. Jiraiya only sighed as he followed after her with Shizun and Tantan close behind. 
B, one of the legendary Sanin, taking on a lowly snot nosed Genin. I should be ashamed of myself, Tsunade said as Naruto looked confused for a bit and then remembered what form he was in. He smirked at her, and Jiraiya knew there'd be trouble from that smirk. Who you calling lowly? Naruto said as he flexed his hands while Tsunade raised her right index finger. See this, it's all I'll need to deal with you. Tsunade said smugly as Jiraiya sighed again. Oh stop trying to show off look Tsunade, maybe you'd want to take this seriously. He's the Jiraiya was saying, only to be cut off with an irate look from Tsunade. Be quiet you perverted toad. It's all I'll need to take this brat down for a nap. Don't make me punch you again like last time. Tsunade yelled out as Jiraiya flinched and did a mock surrender. Jiraiya eyes flinched to Naruto as he saw the boy about to go through hand signs in a flash. Jiraiya had spent quite some time with Naruto now, so he knew Naruto's tell for when the boy was going to go through ninjutsu. Naruto would flex his hands so they were loose, and then he'd drop his arms to his sides, so he could think about just what jutsu he wanted to use. Fine, fine, but don't say I didn't try to warn you Naruto, go wild, but only with the basics. I don't have the cash on me to pay for a ruined street or town. So try out something we haven't practiced as of late. Jiraiya said lazily as Naruto grinned widely after hearing that. Shizune was worried by that grin and Jiraiya's apparent confidence in the kid. What kind of basics could make them so confident? Shizune questioned in her mind as she gazed at Naruto and Jiraiya. It was almost as if Jiraiya was confident in the boy. But, Naruto was his name, was going against Tsunade, Jiraiya's own old teammate, so why was Jiraiya so laid back about it? So what's the bet, granny? Naruto said with mirth as he knew she was a betting lady. Tsunade quickly grew more annoyed with the brat. First of all, don't call me granny. Secondly, the bet is that I can take you down with just this finger. If by some miracle you win I'll give you my necklace. Tsunade said with a smirk on her face as she knew she couldn't lose to some wet behind the ear genin. Shizune's eyes widened upon hearing that, but she was forced to shut up as Tsunade gave her a hard glare. Jiraiya sighed as he wasn't in a position to tell Tsunade's life story, mainly because he hadn't seen his old teammate in years. He'd just stand to the side and see what happens, and then he'd decide. Fine by me, shall we begin? Naruto said with a smirk as he stood straight up while Tsunade settled into a stance. Naruto raised his left hand to the sky as a single cherry blossom petal fell to it. The petal glowed as it transformed into a katana that was Sanbonsakura. He unsheathed it and threw the sheath to the side where it turned to cherry blossom petal that blew away in the wind. He held the blade at a diagonal to his face as Tsunade shifted in her stance. A sword this brat doesn't look like the type, but he seems to hold it with a bit of grace and power, not to a kinjutsu master's extent, but still with some practiced ease. Probably only a month or two of training with it so Jiraiya's got other skills to pass on, Hatsune thought as she took a stance. Maybe that one finger thing wasn't such a good idea now nah. She could still whip this brat into submission. Naruto sped toward Tsunade, with the slug princess's eyes widening at the incredible speed. The boy was obviously using chakra, but still that speed for a genin was impressive. He already had his sword in mid-swing too. Shizune was screaming for Tsunade to move, Jiraiya was telling Naruto not to strike her down, and the pig was squealing out in horror at seeing her owner about to die. She ducked and dodged many of his swings, but then started striking out herself, trying to flick him or tap him. She finally ducked under a swing and flicked him on his forehead, sending him sailing through the air with his headband dissipating. Naruto backflipped to ready himself as his feet hit the ground. He continued to backflip until he was back at his original starting point. He clutched his forehead and realized that she had used chakra in her strength, but not only that. She had used medical ninjutsu to try and disturb his brainwave flow, so he couldn't do his techniques or movements properly. So, she is some kind of legendary medic. To have done all that in one tiny flick. I haven't even got to disrupting movement function yet. But thank Kami-sama I did skip to dispelling it. Naruto thought as he smirked while placing a hand over his forehead, using medical ninjutsu basics to get his brain back to normal. He couldn't do it all the way, but he could at least move easier. An idea hit him as he saw the moonlight reflect off his katana. Tsunade watched him closely with narrowed eyes. What the hell is that brat still doing conscious? A genin like him should have been out for the count after I disrupted his brain functions with lightning chakra. I wonder is it the fox's doing? Tsunade thought as she watched Naruto ready himself for round two. That was fun, but let's try this. I've been want to test out my sword's abilities for a little while now. You see, it has a mind of its own, and it wants to take you down. Naruto said with a grin as he held the katana in front of his face in a vertical parallel to himself. Scatter, Sinbanzakura Naruto said in perfect monotone as his sword began to separate into a thousand slender tiny petals, which then flew away from the hilt, leaving only the sword's handle in Naruto's hand. Tsunade watched as the petals flew around her or dropped from the sky, glowing in the moonlight like a beautiful romance scene. Jiraiya had taken out his notebook and was hastily writing the scene down to use in his next novel. 
Sunade was about to laugh out loud at the stupidity of the technique, but then a petal grazed her cheek. She brushed it off, but looked down at her hand in shock and horror as she used her other hand to hold her cheek. She saw one think in her hand as she dropped to her knees and began to hyperventilate. Blood Sunade whispered out as she shook violently while Shizun rushed to her side. Sunade Sama. Shizun said as the petals flew toward Naruto and transformed back into his sword before bursting into petals and disappearing altogether. It seems this battle was a waste and I really wanted to get some true experience in with this fight. I guess the good I've heard about you was nothing more than simple words. Naruto said disapprovingly as he walked away toward the inn he and Jiraiya were staying in. He really wanted to test himself against one of the Sanin too. Jiraiya sighed as he glanced at Tsunade's shaking form being cared to by Shizun before sighing and following after Naruto. Just great knowing Tsunade, she'll probably take this out of control and challenge the kid without having to fight him again, and that's exactly how we'll get her. Heh, heh Jiraiya you madman, you. Jiraiya thought to himself, but grinned as a plan formulated in his devious mind. Hey Naruto, I'm gonna stay out late tonight, so be sure to read those scrolls before going to bed and practice. Jiraiya yelled out as Naruto waved back his hand to show he heard. Jiraiya grinned even more as he headed to the bar he just knew Tsunade would be at later. What better way to get over your loss to a brat like Naruto than to drink yourself under the table. Later, with Naruto, he and his clones had finally finished reading and memorizing the scrolls of the first and second Hokages. Now all that was left was to read the advanced sealing scrolls Jiraiya had personal written. There was a knock at his door, and when he opened the door there stood Shizun with textbooks and scrolls in her hands as she gazed at him, nervous as always. Hey, Shizun, what are you doing here? Naruto asked as he already had a pretty good idea. He allowed her in and she settled in at the desk he wasn't using. Well, Jiraiya-sama went out drinking with Tsunade-sama, so I thought I'd keep you company. Shizun said as she opened her medical textbook. Naruto raised an eyebrow, but said nothing. You're studying too. Naruto asked as he went back to his spot where his clones had dispelled right before he went to answer the door and began reading the ceiling scroll again. Shizun nodded as she looked at him with a genuine smile. Yeah, even when you're in higher ranks it never hurts to know more. There are some things about the human body that I have yet to learn, especially in regards with how to heal it. Tsunade Sama has taught me all she can, but I still want to go further than that. Shizun said in confidence as Naruto smiled back at her and set aside his ceiling scroll. Well, let's help each other out a bit. You help me with medical ninjutsu, and maybe I can help you find new healing techniques, because I've been thinking of creating other techniques that aren't like any jutsu in the world, Naruto said to Shizun, but the last part to himself as he was still thinking on it. Shizun smiled and nodded happily at the fact she now had her own, informal, student to pass her knowledge on to. She could just die of excitement at the thought of being called Shizun sensei. Alright, but that could take years, and I'm not sure you're ready for that kind of commitment. Shizun said, but her jaw dropped as twenty more Naruto filled the room with smirks on their faces as the original had his hands in a cross seal. I think I'm more than ready. Don't you? Naruto, the real one, said with the biggest smirk of them all. Shizun blushed a bit but then got an evil gleam in her eye as she looked at all the Naruto. Well, that just means no going easy then. If you can do what I think you can then you'll master the bare basics before midnight. I can't wait, we'll be at Tsunade Sama's level before no time. Just how many can you create at a time anyway? Shizun said in excitement, but then asked with a grin on her face that made their spines chill. About 200 at one time why? Naruto said a bit nervously as Shizun's grin grew. Because, that's just perfect. Shizun said in a sweet yet cold voice. She cackled evilly as she began his torch she meant training. Naruto was starting to feel like he may not have made the best decision, and with Kaiubi sensei snickering in his mind, he knew he'd be in a world of pain. Chapter 7 off the beaten path. A week later, morning, with Naruto and Shizun. Morning came very quickly for the blonde Hokage since he hadn't gone to bed at all last night. Shizun was sound asleep on his bed, again, as he was still up with his clones reading through her books and scrolls. He found it a little odd that the pervy sage hadn't returned last night from his fifth night out drinking with Tsunade, but then again, that was nothing new. The only reason he was more concerned than normal was because of the possible events that may unfold later that day. He knew Rachimaru had probably given her a week to decide, so he'd be ready today. Determined to be ready for anything, he closed his book and gathered his supplies and set them out to make sure everything was accounted for. Kunai, shuriken, Sanbonsakura, healing ointments made last night with Shizun everything he needed was checked off his list as he went through his assortment of tools. He sealed everything back up and put the scroll with his extra things in his kunai pouch, stopping to debate once as he touched the seal on the left hip of his pants. On one hand it was a very powerful weapon that could help tip the scale in a fight. On the other hand though, if it was taken from him it could make someone else a lot more powerful than they needed to be at the moment. 
He resigned to have Kaiubi tie his soul to the blade, after all, only he was supposed to use it, right? Hey Kaiubi. Naruto thought as he was sure Kaiubi could hear his thoughts. What the hell do you want, brat? I'm trying to get my morning nap in. Kaiubi's gruff and plainly male voice came to his thoughts as he frowned. Just great, instead of the sexy, ready to do anything for him Kaiu chan he had hoped to get, he got the hard nosed, hard ass military commander he didn't want at all. Hey, you maggot ass brat. I can hear every damn thing you think. Now think your business before I really do turn into a mindless beast like those villagers of yours think I am and turn your little blonde ass into a chew toy for my future kits. Kaiubi said, and that's Kaiubi sensei to you while I'm in this form. Or did you forget what the punishment was? Kaiubi sensei. Kaiubi sensei said gruffly as he growled in Naruto's thoughts. I just want to know if you can make Sanbonzakura and me tied so no one can steal him. Naruto exclaimed in complete and utter fear of that punishment again. Kaiubi sensei smirked a foxy smirk as he mentally cracked his knuckles. No problem my small, and still regrettably virgin, jailer. It's done. Kaiubi sensei said in a slick and sly voice as he snapped his fingers. What? That's it. Naruto asked as he could mentally feel Kaiubi sensei frown a bit. Yes, or did you expect some age-old ritual and a ceiling circle which you might not survive? Bitch, please. Tying the human soul to an object is easier to me than killing small woodland critters. If you wanted to do it with another human that would only be a clap of the hands. Kaiubi sensei said with a yawn at the end. Hey, why haven't I been training with you anymore? I mean I just sort of forgot about that method until now. I mean, not that shadow clones aren't cool, but why not just read these scrolls and train with you for three years in a few hours? Naruto asked as Kaiubi sensei mentally rolled his eyes. Because brat, that was a one-time deal. I slowed your mind longer than it can ever hold again. If I did it again, you'd be a vegetable because of the deep-seated slowed functions that I'd have to stop. Like motor skills and such. Kaiubi sensei said lazily as Naruto still had one more question. If you can tie a soul to an object that quick, then what about immortality? Naruto asked as Kaiubi sensei narrowed his eyes. That is not difficult either, but I've only done that with one human. And that was to gain my freedom from the little fool. Kaiubi sensei said with more distant and venom than Naruto thought possible. Was it Madara Ichiha? Naruto asked as Kaiubi sensei nodded slowly. Yes, that accursed Ichiha has plagued me since the days of Hashirama. Kaiubi sensei said, as Naruto's eyes widened a fraction. You didn't use an honorific, his last name, your Hokage, or anything like that. Did you know the Shadai Hokage personally? Naruto asked as Kaiubi sensei smirked. Why yes, yes I did. You don't get to be a man's practical guard fox for nearly 30 years without getting to talk and know more about him, his family, and his students. Are you jealous? Kaiubi sensei said with mirth as he could feel Naruto's jealous, but quickly frowned as it turned to pride and curiosity. Not at all. After all that just means that I can talk to you about everything I want to know about the creator of the Leaf Village. This'll be so awesome. You're not getting too many naps anymore. I've got so many questions. Naruto cried out in joy as Kaiubi sensei screamed out in horror. Naruto snickered as he cut the mental link and went back to what he had been doing. Having all of his gear packed up and ready, Naruto decided on a quick shower. It wasn't that he cared about going into a possible fight dirty, since he really was a little bit grimy due to his training schedule and less than hygienic habits as of the search trip. He'd normally, while on this trip, just train, exercise, and then read until he fell asleep, leaving no time for such things as bathing. The reason he decided to get a shower now of all times was more practical. Using warm water was a quick and thorough way of loosening muscles before strenuous activity, and if there was a more strenuous activity than the possibility of fighting a Sanin and Kabuto, whose skills he knew next to nothing about, then he hadn't found it yet. Thank Kami for Shizun and her medical books for letting him know all of that. And Kanoha, with Hinata, so you want me to teach you about what? Kurinai almost yelled out as a blushing Hinata jumped slightly before poking her fingertips together and looking at her sensei with both nervousness and hope. He please, Kurinai sensei. I and need to know em more about it if I want this to w work out. Hinata said quietly with a sudden burst of conviction. She would not let anything mess this up. She'd kill them before they ruined this. She didn't stutter. Maybe she really is serious about this, but let's just see how serious she is. Kurinai thought as she looked at Hinata with pride. This was turning out to be better for Hinata than she had at first thought when Hinata first came and told her about it. She smiled at the girl she looked like a daughter. Fine, but I can't teach any more than I did before. Although, there is one person who can tell you just about anything about it. Kurinai said as Hinata looked at her with sparking pupil-less eyes. Kurinai got a flashlight from out of nowhere and made the entire training field they were in as dark as night with a Jinjutsu. She clicked the flashlight on and held it beneath her face as she gave the already frightened a creepy look that scared the girl even more. You must go and see, Anko. 
Kurinai said spookily as Hinata fainted. Kurinai began to laugh wickedly as lightning flashed in the back of her Jinjutsu. She'd have to thank Naruno, Hokage-sama, for those pranking tips someday soon. She chuckled to herself as she picked up her student and began walking back into the village to bring her to the Hayuga compound. Kanoha was definitely gonna be changing with Naruto as Hokage. Later, with Naruto, he was just coming out of the bathroom from his shower, which was longer than he first thought and wanted, when there was a knock at the door. Figures pervy sage would get wasted enough to lose the room key again. Probably too hungover to sneak in here too. Naruto grumbled and thought as he walked over to open the door as another, more frantic knock came. He stumbled a bit as he sneezed and wondered who was thinking about him. Hang on, I'm coming. He said as he opened the door to find Shizun there, breathing heavily. She was dressed and had some ninja tools in her right hand. She was holding her stomach with her left, as if she was hit in it. He guessed she went to her own room to get the tools while he was in the shower, but her room wasn't that far away. Jureya-sama. Is Jureya-sama in yet? Shizun said in a rushed manner. Naruto could clearly see she was distraught as she tried to look over him and into the room she was in just this morning. From her limited viewpoint she couldn't see anyone else there, so she turned her attention back to the boy in front of her, finally noticing his state of dress, or lack thereof. Blushing heavily she turned around and apologized. As sorry and Naruto-kun, I, I didn't mean to come at a bad time. I just really need to see Jureya-sama. Shizun said with a red face and stutter. It's about Tsunade, isn't it? She went to meet Orochimaru Naruto said, not caring to put up pretenses anymore. Shizun spun on her heel, not caring about his unclothed state anymore, as she gripped his shoulders tightly. You knew. But how? Shizun asked frantically as Naruto gave her a blank stare while he gently removed her hands from his shoulders. Naruto checked the hall before pulling her inside and shutting the door, causing her to squeak a little in surprise as her face went red again. Is the world filled with a lot of Hinata-chans? Wait, Hinata-chan. When did that oh yeah, she loves me, marrying her and she stalked me. I almost forgot about that. We're having a serious talk about that when I get back to the village. Naruto thought as Shizun sat on his hotel bed. When we got here I wandered over to where the castle was and found Orochimaru's chakra in the air. It wasn't hard to find it in him, so I discovered your little meeting with him. I didn't know for sure, but I and Pervy Sage had a good idea of what was going on. Pervy Sage wasn't going to go to stop her, but I'm betting she tried something to keep him away last night. I haven't seen him since yesterday. Naruto said as he put his hand on the seam of his towel before looking at the medic and arching an eyebrow. Taking the hint, the blushing woman quickly turned around as she heard the towel drop to the floor behind her. So if you came new then why didn't you bring it up earlier? Shizun asked, trying to hide her nervousness from her voice. Because, first we had to get Tsune to trust us enough to come back to Kanoha. A fight over that meeting would be bad for relations. Second, if there is a fight today then two San and against one gives us good odds of taking Orochimaru out for good. Though, that'll be a little tougher if Granny gave Pervy Sage any trouble last night for all we know he could be tied up in a cellar somewhere in town, being fondled by some really fat G I'm finished. Naruto said as Shizun turned around to see him in his true form for the first time. It reminded her of some of the samurai she'd seen during the last war, as she looked at the long white Hayori and the sword on his right hip. Then there was the look in his eyes, a look that told her that he had already seen battle, pain, and the death of good people. The look that seemed so out of place on his innocent face, yet at the same time she couldn't think of a face it would fit better with his determination. It was then her factual mind started processing again, and the blush returned to her face as she realized she'd been staring at him. Why you actually plan to H help in a B battle between S and N? Shizun asked in shock as Naruto simply nodded as he wrapped his scarf around his neck. Well I don't plan on sitting on my ass and doing nothing. Jiraiya sensei may be a pervert, but he's the only teacher I've got that actually taught me anything more than one thing besides Aruka sensei. Tsunade is kind of a bitch, but she's the only one that might be able to save Kakashi and Sasuke. Of course that doesn't mean I'm going to rush in and attack right off the bat either. That's what the old me would have done if it weren't for sensei's teachings, one, now enough talking, if you're here that means Tsunade is already meeting with that damn snake charmer. Naruto said as he about to jump out the window, but had to duck his head back inside as two shuriken lodged into the wooden window frame near him. Unsheathing Sinbonsakura in order to guard against any more attacks, he eased his head out the window again. He sheathed the blade back as it was unneeded when he realized the attacker was the pervy sage himself. What the hell pervy sage, you could have killed me. Naruto said as Jureya breathed a sigh of relief upon seeing his apprentice. That's shut up, brat. Tsunade, she used some kind of drug on me. It took me most of the morning just to get over here. It didn't do much to me since I lined the inside of my stomach with toad oil before even drinking with her. So it's clearing up, but it'll be an hour before I'm ready to fight or win a dance battle. Jureya said as he already removed the oil from his stomach and vomited it up. 
but ever Tsune thought she slipped him secretly was powerful, but not completely stronger than Toad Oil. It still took out almost all of his muscle strength, but he wasn't one of the legendary Sanin for nothing. Alright, but listen, Tsunade is already on her way to meet Orochimaru. Shizun, help him get back on his feet. I'm going on ahead to see what I can do. Naruto said as he jumped to the roof of the building with Yureya nodding and Shizun looking as worried as ever. Wait, what? I'm the Jonin here, so you should stay and heal him, and I'll go. Besides I know Tsunade Sama the best, so she and I will have better teamwork to hold them off. Shizun said, trying to reason, but Naruto shook his head, not even bothering to tell her he was actually Hokage and Jonin level in battle since Jureya told him so. This would be his test yeah, his true combat test. The Sanin showdown would be just perfect. True, but you're also the better and more experienced medic of the two of us here. You can help him recover a lot faster than I can. Plus, I'm more of a battle person than you, so Tsunade and I can watch each other's back just fine. Naruto said as he sensed out Orochimaru's chakra and found the figurative smoke cloud of it near the very first spot he had sensed it before. Shizun wanted to argue the points further, but Jureya cut in. The kid's right, Shizun. You'll just have to be quick about getting me up and running again. Naruto, be careful, it's Orochimaru you're dealing with, so no slip-ups. Use whatever you can to slow him down, but don't use any of those jutsu. Jureya said sternly as Naruto nodded with a serious face. Naruto could probably use his newest technique that he created. His father, Minato, would be so proud if he could see that move in action. Also, it wouldn't matter if Orochimaru saw that move, because from what Naruto said only people he taught it to could use it properly. Her precious people Shizun said quietly with only Jureya having heard her as Naruto, had sensed a spike in Tsunade's chakra and the appearance of Kabuto's own chakra. Damn Naruto jumped off the roof and blurred toward where the castle once stood. Naruto. Damn it Shizun, listen to me. There is no way to bring people back to life. What Orochimaru was talking about is an abomination of a forbidden jutsu. A kinjutsu. I need you to heal me as fast as possible. If that kid gets involved, things could take a turn real quick if he's going to battle. Yureya said as Shizu nodded confidently while thinking of everything she had learned from last week of nights alone with her shadow clones. True she could only make five at the most, but they were a huge help in her studies and her abilities, even if she would have a headache that needed her own medical attention. She had come so far. Now I just have to put that to the test Shizun said quietly, as her palms glowed green over Jureya's stomach and chest. But Sasuke, in his mind, he felt the pain as it came back and left. It'd be back in five minutes, but that wasn't what his mind was focused on. It was focused on his life and the people in it. Bakashi, his teacher, his mentor, but the man's constant indifference to everything annoyed him to no end. Sure the guy would protect his team and village with his own life, but what was that if your student couldn't come to you with their problems? He had, at one time, tried to talk with Kakashi about Itachi, but the man had been dodging Naruto's asking for help and then suddenly pushed Chidori training on him. It wasn't that he was complaining, but when he brought it up to the man he simply ignored it. Although he did start keeping a closer eye on him. It bugged him that the man didn't want to talk about it but had the nerve to watch him like a hawk because of it. Yes, he saw Kakashi outside his house the other day, being sure Sasuke was at home and not out raving over revenge against Itachi. Like he'd just become that consumed in his vengeance. This wasn't some stupid manga where he'd just up and drop his good life for power. Arachimaru. Nope, not thinking that now. Leave that for later. Next was Sakura, his female teammate in annoyance, although the girl had stopped being a true annoyance after the wave mission. It was just she seemed to want to make him happy at the expense of others, and that wasn't what he wanted or needed. He needed someone that would argue with him over ideas. He wanted someone he could just sit around with, without them shitting themselves because he was the last to chair. Sakura had been getting there, but now she was falling back. And speaking of the person he needed and wanted. Naruto, his male teammate, his rival, and his best friend that he loved like a brother, though the last of which he wouldn't admit out loud or want, after he had read what was on the Ichiha tablet. The damn thing said he had to kill Naruto, his best friend, and he wouldn't do that, no matter what. Naruto was the only person who truly understood him. Naruto knew when to argue, when he needed a good sparring match, and Naruto wasn't some frowning girl. That last one was such a plus. Naruto was his brother, but lately Naruto had grown distant from both him and Sakura. The time Naruto was in the village he hadn't seen him. It was like he was hiding something and that pissed Sasuke off. Naruto knew he could tell him anything. They were practically brothers in all but blood. If Naruto was in Uchiha that'd be the best. Or if he had been in Uzumaki. Hm Sasuke Uzumaki, Naruto Uchiha he didn't know which one sounded cooler. Wait getting off track. Anyways, Naruto was hiding something and he didn't like it. He had followed Naruto around. It seemed Naruto had made friends with his natural enemy, the Hyuga, but he wouldn't hold it against Naruto. He had even gone by Naruto's apartment in his search for Itachi. 
everything was gone, although when he was over there before with Naruto there wasn't much anyways. He just wished that Naruto would tell him about whatever he was trying to hide. Hell, he had told Naruto about Itachi, and Naruto told him about the fox. Although they both thought they were gonna die at the hands of Orochimaru in the forest of death, which would have been pretty ironic, but nonetheless they shared those kinds of deep dark secrets with each other. He'd be sure he questioned Naruto straight out when he woke up. And not a damn thing was gonna stop him. But Tsunade, Tsunade slowly walked toward Orochimaru, her hands glowing green from her healing jutsu. The only thoughts going through her head were about her brother and her lover, who would soon be reunited with her. As she came within inches of her ex-teammate they were both forced to jump apart when three kunai shot between them. All three people, as Kabuto had jumped out to protect his Orochimaru-sama, turned toward the source, only for Tsunade to narrow her eyes at who would dare interrupt them. Tsunade sneered, furious at who had showed up to ruin her one opportunity at happiness. The day to you too, Tsunade Haim. I hope you didn't get too much of a hangover from your drinking with Sensei last night. For it seemed he couldn't walk right at all. Naruto said, in sealed runt form, with a grin as he bowed and stood on the wall off to one side and behind Tsunade. Orochimaru smiled snake-like at seeing the youth who had defeated Niji during the Chunin exams. The only wish it had been Sasuke, the one who had bested Gara during the invasion, from what he heard around the leaf village from his spy there. Ah, Naruto-kun. I haven't seen you since the exams. Tell me, how's my old sensei doing? Orochimaru asked with a wide smirk as Naruto's eyes flashed crimson for a moment. He's just fine with Shinigami-sama, all thanks to you. Maybe next time you'll do us all a favor and fall on that damned cursed sword. Or better yet, shove it up your ass. Naruto said with a calm fury as he knew Orochimaru was trying to goad him. And after all of the entertainment I gave you, this is how you thank me. Oh well, Kabuto-kun, kill him. Orochimaru said, and without so much as a moment's hesitation, Kabuto threw a couple senbin at the blonde, impaling his neck and heart with pinpoint accuracy. Now that animal control is taken care of we can get back to telling her exactly how you intend to bring back her loved ones. Naruto's voice spilled over the scene again, this time from behind Orochimaru as he was discovered to be walking towards them on the side of the wall, opposite the one he'd been standing on before. Looking back at the body Kabuto had attacked they were just in time to witness the last of the smoke dissipate. Kabuto, I thought I told you to kill him. Orochimaru said with a hint of anger in his voice as he didn't even turn to look at Naruto. So the brat used a shadow clone how surprising. My apologies Orochimaru-sama, I will remedy that mistake immediately. Kabuto said as once again Naruto was hit with the same lethal accuracy and once again he dispelled from existence. These clones aren't free you know. Naruto said as he was leaning against the hole in the wall that Tsunade had created when she first met Orochimaru in town. He then got a foxy grin on his face as he shrugged nonchalantly to Orochimaru. Hind if you won't tell her, I will. You see Granny Orochimaru was seething while Kabuto attacked in response. Again the clone popped and again another showed up elsewhere. He plans to use a jutsu called Summoning Jutsu. Reanimation, created by the Nidame Hokage, your very granduncle. It's true that it brings back the dead, but it brings them back as nothing more than puppet, most of the time as little more emotionless armies. I know, there's more to the trick, but I know, it won't bring them back completely. As it is they would be completely, under his control. Oh yeah, and let's not forget the only cost are human sacrifices. Naruto finished as Kabuto struck that clone as well. Orochimaru wanted to roar out in pure anger that his trickery was explained by some snot-nosed genin. His anger rose each and every time Kabuto would kill a clone, only to have another continue where the last left off. I knew I should have killed you when I had the chance, you brat. Orochimaru sneered as this time Naruto appeared behind Tsunade, more or less using her to shield himself from attack. Naruto completely ignored Orochimaru as he smirked from the practice he got in with his newest prank and technique. So, Granny, is that what you want? A couple of undead puppets in exchange for releasing their puppeteer on the world again which most likely he'd use them to kill you and Shizune as soon as you healed him. Naruto said as Tsunade looked deep in thought. She didn't want to believe the brat, but she couldn't ignore his knowledge of the technique Orochimaru planned to use. She knew all about her ex-teammate's sick experiments, yet it all left her with a question. How do you know so much about this jutsu? She asked Naruto as it was her last hope to discover if Orochimaru truly was lying, even though Orochimaru's actions against the kid pretty much proved his guilt. Because it was the same one he used against the old man when he brought the Shadai and Nidame Hokages back using it. He tried to bring back the Yandame too, but that one didn't succeed, right Orochi-chan? Naruto said cheekily as he gave the snake San and a fox-like grin over Tsunade's shoulders. Is that true, Orochimaru? Tsunade said while lowering her head, her voice coming out in a growl. Not only had the snake offered to give her loved ones back to her with such a despicable kinjutsu, but he'd also already brought back both of the previous cage, her blood relatives, to fight against the village they founded. Oh, he was dying today, coo, coo, coo. 
You really are the annoying prankster aren't you, Naruto-kun. You just can't leave things that don't concern you alone. Well since it seems I won't be getting healed the nice way, I'll just have to make sure you can't heal anyone else either, Aitsunade. There are other ways for me to get the use of my arms back. Arachimaru said with an amused smile on his pale face. Yet despite his threat, he and Kabuto were forced to jump to a wall, then tree in order to get away from Tsunade's Herculean attacks. At back here you bastards. She called out to them as she crashed through the wall they had jumped behind. You know, leaping over that would have taken less chakra Naruto said, but then shut his mouth tight as the enraged slug San and gave him a hard glare. I won't thank you for this brat, so shut up. Just be glad I'll be coming back and healing whoever when this is over with. Hell I might even take up the Hokage seat just to put you in your placeligly. Tsunade said as she thought they came to make her Hokage as well without telling her. That was always the way to do things sneakily. Naruto almost laughed out loud, but he didn't. Although, he couldn't help but smile at himself as he followed the woman after the two traitors of Konoha. Progress is progress I suppose. I just hope Pervy Sage, Boss, and Shizun can find us. He thought as he watched Tsunade continuously crater the ground with her attacks. Okay, well that shouldn't be a problem then guess I'll just hope they get here before she runs out of chakra. Hitting nothing is definitely not working wonders for her chakra I'm sure. Naruto thought as he sighed at her actions. He dispelled himself after following behind, though far behind enough to know where they would be heading. But the real Naruto, in his true form, well I guess I better go after them then. It was a good idea to send a clone and have it practice that technique for me instead of myself. Well let the true battle begin right pervy sage. Naruto said as he got up from his spot on a nearby roof and changed form just as Jiraiya and Shizun dropped down behind him. As sneaky as he was with those jutsu, I Naruto. Jiraiya said as he smirked from figuring out his student's plan. Yes, but I've created a technique that bests his jutsu by a long shot, Jiraiya sensei. Naruto said with his own smirk as he disappeared in a single blur. Jiraiya and Shizun's eyes widened as they realized they couldn't follow his speed or know where he was. What was that, Jiraiya-sama? Shizun asked in the hopes the man had some idea of the technique Naruto had used. That was a technique he created to surpass the Yandame's flying thunder god Jutsu, and he did it all right. Not a seal to be had in that technique. Jiraiya said as he knew Naruto wasn't relying on anything but speed and some form of energy, yet it wasn't chakra. Let's go Shizun. Jiraiya said as he and Shizun blurred toward Tsunade and Rachimaru's chakra sources. What if fire daimyo make Naruto 5th Hokage, thanks for watching my video till the end if you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel, and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.